Hello, and welcome to session zero, our character creation for The One Ring by Freely Games. And my name is Kimmy, and I will be the GM for this game. It's very strange for me to be sitting away from the control panel and GMing. It's been a while. <laughs> so I'm very excited to run this game. I am, love this world, as many of you know, and I have a fantastic group of players. We're going to go around and introduce ourselves, and we'll start with Dave. Ah, I, I am Kadave. Uh, you can hear me, so that's awesome. Um <laughs> I'm doing it right. Dave's <laughs> first time winner. producing too tonight, so good job, Dave. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything else about myself yet, so yeah. we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Jay, and I am looking forward to playing with everyone on this uh, this game. I'm very very excited. Hi guys, I'm Kai. I use he they and she pronouns, and I'm so excited to be here for the first time. Welcome. Uh, a new happy jacker. Exciting. Yay. And I'm Sam, uh, also known as Red Pandroid. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm also super excited to get this game started. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just so you know, we don't have a title for this game yet, but eventually you'll be able to find all the sessions of this game in podcast form and on video at happyjacks.org slash whatever the title of this game ends up being. Um, if you just go to happyjacks.org, you'll probably find it that way as well. Um, and I'd like to first start off, um, we are using safety tools, so um, even though you can't necessarily see them on screen, we have the X cards in place, uh, um, we have some basic lines of veil understandings, and we're going to do more of that after we do session zero so that we have a very clear understanding of what we're doing, um, and we all just kind of going to be careful and do what we can have a fantastic time playing this game. Um, and let's see. So we are doing character creation tonight. We have these awesome little uh, character sheets that we printed out. And has anyone here actually played the One Ring before? Nope. Roll newbies. That'll be great. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, the One Ring is set in Tolkien universe, and it's basically between the Hobbit and like the eighty years between that and when um, the Ring is thrown into Mount Doom. So it's that little middle of time there. We are not going to worry too much about changing the history of the world. I love the history of this world, but it's no fun. Like we've talked about a million times on the advice show, like when you're working in an existing universe, it's no fun if everyone's like, you got the little like, okay, here's the rails. You can play this game, but oh, make sure you don't burn down the prancing pony because they need that later, <laughs> you know, things like that. So we will be having a good time. Um, if you are a Tolkien purist, Enjoy yourself. Don't like push your no your your glasses up and um actually me. Um <laughs> so because we're not gonna worry about too much because we still want to have a really good time. And we do have the the gradients of like super Tolkien nerds who speak Elvish, <laughs> both Sindarin and Quinya. Yeah. <laughs> so Quinya. Kai speaks Sindarin. Uh to the I saw the movies once at the table, which is perfect. That is the exact mix I'd love. So very excited. Um, so step one of character creation is choosing your heroic culture. A lot of RPG systems have, um, and I'm going to just keep talking to kind of fill things. So if you guys have made decisions, you can like raise your hand and I'll like call on you and be like, because I'm a very good teacher and that's how I <laughs> um, So a lot of TTRPGs, you'd pick what your class first, and that would be the thing that really uh, like influences your abilities the most. Um, but your heroic culture in the One Ring is the thing that really like influences what you do the most. And there's a lot of different ones. Um, so the options from the One Ring are bardings, dwarves of Durin's folk, the only kind of folk we want, um, elves from Linden, hobbits of the Shire, the men of Bree, and then the rangers of the north. So the Dunedain or the Descendants of the Dune Dine and some of them. So, um, is any, we've kind of talked about it a little bit in Slack ahead of time. So, if some of you have made like preliminary decisions. Does anyone like, nope? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty settled now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. At least why, why don't we do Dave going. and then we'll go with Kai? Uh, I, I was going to, I'm going to make a dwarf of Durin's folk. Excellent. Um, okay. After a lot of deliberation, I'm going to be an elf of Linden. Okay. I think I've narrowed it down to barding for okay. me. Okay. And I am going to play a Hobbit of the Shire. Look at you all like deciding. 
crushed it. Yeah. 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 First We've decision. Got the below yeah. Like, yeah. Portion of the, the yeah. game. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the tall folk. Yeah. 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 The talls and the small tall folks. Yeah. Table. So the this game's going to take place in Eriador, which is the area most people would know it because that's where the Shire is. That's where Breland is. Prancing Pony, all that stuff. The first big chunk of uh, the Lord of the Rings like story takes place here. Um, it's a pretty quiet part of the world, even though it is the it used to be a major kingdom. Um, so the elves and the dwarves, a little less the dwarves, but definitely the elves would have an idea of how you know amazing this place used to be. But the memories of mortals are are not no, great no, just, i have this whole like elf hipster thing <laughs> like in my head now like, man. Like, oh man middle used to be so cool oh, and was cool yeah <laughs> arner was the best man um so uh dwarves come through a lot of times traveling um to the east is the kingdom of the mountain to the west are the Blue Mountains, and they have um, some holdings there. Um, Northmen come through sometimes. Most of them are from Dale. You know, they're um, subjects of King Bard the Dragon Slayer, and uh, it, it, it's a it's a pretty quiet place for the most part. There is adventure here, but not on the grand scale of throwing the One Ring into mountains adventure. <laughs> so it's a, a little bit quieter and things like that. And let's see. So you've all done that. So nail the first part, which is obviously the hardest thing. So the second step in character creation is recording your cultural blessing. So there isn't a lot of choice here. Most of them just have it there. Every heroic culture in the Wandering Ring has a cultural blessing, and that makes your character just a little bit more unique. Um, any questions on that particular piece? No? Nope. I just have the one option. So yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Um, we want to go around and tell everybody what they are? Um, yeah, we might as well, we'll do that. Just for those of you okay. who are watching this and will only watch this episode because you want to learn how to play the one ring, because that's actually what a lot of people do. They watch the character creation yeah. episode because they want to play. Yeah, yeah, so yes, yeah, sure. let's go ahead and go around and you can share your cultural blessing. Can we go first? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, for dwarves, it's redoubtable. Uh, and the weight of armor and helmets is halved. Or load. Ooh, nice. So I can wear heavy armor and not really suffer as much. Nice. Uh, for hobbits, it is hobbit sense. The hobbits have learned their place in the world a long time ago and they display a robust capacity for insight that many folks mistake for a lack of courage. So with that, um, my wisdom rolls are favored and I gain 1d on shadow tests made to resist the effects of greed. Nice. Um, the elves of Linden are blessed with elven skill. By virtue of their birthright, elves are capable of reaching levels of finesse unattainable by mortals, like a cool shield slide down a bunch of stairs or something. <laughs> um, if you are not miserable, you can spend one point of hope to achieve a magical success on a skill roll. Oh. So if I decide I want to be cool, I get to be cool. <laughs> That's fun. Um, for bardings, the cultural blessing is stout-hearted. Uh, stories tell that the Bardings lived under the shadow of a great dragon for decades, mm. though our, my valor rolls are favored. Okay. So taking notes real quick. Um, perfect. And the next part is determining your attributes. So the three attributes are, first one is strength, and that's basically everything your body performs physically. So even if it's, you know, belting out a banger on karaoke night, like anything like that, um uh it is determined by strength and heart is the strength of your character's spirit it's gonna be really confusing because in the game i'm writing heart is like your empathy but okay i'll get it right <laughs> um overall demeanor your ability to like caring about other people and wits uh anything clever memory based you know being like on your toes sharp-witted <laughs> Um, attributes play a more prominent role, um, and, uh, see, sorry, I'm trying to read my notes. There's a lot of things. Uh, I 
I did not write down how you figure that out. Sorry. <laughs> It's in the <laughs> it's in the book. It's okay. in the attributes. Would you like to read it out to last me? Sure. Each um race has an attribute table. Um Oh, that's why it's not in my notes. Yeah. Probably like C table. Yeah, each one and you can either choose a set of attributes or you can roll one success die, so one of your D sixes, um, and randomly pick which set of the attributes is the one. And it's basically like they've they've balanced the same like fourteen points. And you just get to pick which one of the 14 distribution. Perfect. That makes perfect sense why I didn't write it down. If there's literally a table, it's like, take these. Ooh, the ones for you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need to write that down. Um, we will be talking about two different types of, of die during this game. There's the um, feet die, which is a D12. And then there's the success die, which are D6s. And you make a dice pool with a specific number of uh, D6s success die based on what your character sheet tells you. And there's also a wild thing with the the feet die where there's like two runes on it and one of them's like the good rune and one of them's the bad rune and if you like get those specific ones it does wild things so all right i also like how every culture has a different set of derived stats mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like as a baseline plus your attribute number mm -hmm. that's pretty fun yeah i like that So, and just keep in mind here, um, if you have a cultural blessing, I don't remember all, what you all explained, um, they might bump up your attributes. So just keep that in mind. Oh, okay. Doing that. All right. It's exciting to have very unique diverse party like one from every different group which is probably the norm but mm -hmm. i think it's probably rare you have like an entire group of the dune dying or something that's our rangers or whatever well that'd be interesting to play like an all heart hobbit party that's actually the oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the the <laughs> but, starter box yeah the starter kit is all is all hobbits there's one of them she's super <laughs> cute i have to find her she's uh she has like this parasol and i just like wanted to like go wild with that and be like battle parasol. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, she's so much fun. But I might have to use use her at some point as an NPC. I think I kept her character sheet in the house because I like so much. Those are so beautifully drawn. Yeah, they really are. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And three of us um backed the Kickstarter. So we have a plethora of things to uh help us out. I, yeah, I would I would just floor it with the stuff that kept coming out of the box. Like, yeah. I opened up the box, I was like What's this? <laughs> More? <laughs> and it doesn't... Uh, I'll be the first guy to admit, I, I'm a super huge uh, fan of Freely stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, oh, I'm in on all their stuff. So when I saw they were making the game, I was like, whatever, I'll just click the button. Yeah. I didn't even really read what was coming. <laughs> or I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, so then when I got the box, I opened it up, and I was like, there's so many things. There's so many things. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I did the thing where I was like, do I need another map of Middle Earth? Yes. Yeah, the answer was yes. Because the minute <laughs> I saw Dave's, I was really sad that so I didn't. So pretty. Oh, no. oh like oh, no. big fabric printed yeah. map. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's cool. I was literally like, oh, I could I could put that in my house. I could put it on the wall in my house. Mm. My partner would be like into that so much. Yeah, I, for all of those of you at home who think that I am the big Tolkien nerd in my household. Yeah. You are incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just some like information while they are still working on stuff. Uh, basically, there's a target number. So at, when you roll your die, and unlike a lot of free league systems where you're looking for a specific die, for this you're actually going to be adding up the die, and um, you want your total to either match or exceed the target number that's on the character sheet. Um, so it's a it's a little different, but I don't hate it. So for example, one of the uh, the characters that came with the system, um, just like the sample ones, has a strength of fifteen. So if this was actually a PC, the player would have to roll the die, the feet die, and the specific number of success die, the D6s, and they'd have to meet or exceed 15 to have a success. I 
had a whole thing prepared about like the lore of the world, but then I went through it really fast. So let me open up the book and I'll read some more lore while we're waiting. Unless someone's ready to go. Filling in numbers and marking boxes. There's a lot yeah. of yeah. 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 The it's not too bad, reading. but it's like it's more than like a lot of the systems I run. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, I have to like give time for math stuff. What? That's fine. Okay. I think I'm done. You think you're done? Okay. At least with the filling in boxes and perfect writing numbers. <laughs> there you go. Of course, I closed the one tab that is the one I needed. There you go. All right. Uh, I can't remember what I've already said to you, all of you and what I said on stream the other. So if I repeat myself stream, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but this is also, um, if you're looking to play like the actual Lord of the Rings, like running, going through to Mordor and like climbing Mount Doom, um, the system can do that, but it's not really designed for that. It's, it's made for like much smaller scale stories and it's specifically designed to stay in Eriador, which is that one zone that I was talking about. Um, kind of between the uh, the Misty Mountains and the ocean right there. So uh, much smaller scale. It's like perfect for like if you actually read like the actual end of The Lord of the Rings where like spoilers for a book that's like older than all of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, where the, the hobbits after they, you know, save the world, uh, go back and uh, free the Shire. Um, then it's it's a little bit more that scale where it's very important to them as individuals and to the people who live in that area, but it's not like the world's not going to end if they don't, you know, fight back against the uh, malicious forces that took over the Shire while they were gone. That part always bothered me. Uh -huh. oh. it, it always felt like, well, there was a mess of other hobbits here. Like, these, these, Five guys go on a little trip and the whole place falls apart? Come on. <laughs> well, it's, it, most hobbits didn't have the skill set necessary to yeah, fight yeah. back. That's like the idea of it. I just always started getting out of my head of like <laughs> hobbit gorilla fighters, like <laughs> popping out a little, like what? kind of if you watch the Rings of Power, like the, the way they just disappear into the landscape and <laughs> pop out and just go after people. Like, yeah, that'd be if awesome. If I've watched the Rings of Power. <laughs> I actually haven't. <gasps> Twist. But I, it's not because I don't want to. It's okay. because I desperately want to and okay. I've been busy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it, Soon. I, you and I, when you watch it, we'll sit down and... It'll be great. It'll be great. Like I've seen two episodes. Yeah, there's like a lot. Mm -hmm. But okay, I think my dear friend Bear McCurry's soundtrack is fantastic. It's stunning. Yeah, he's like the one person wanted for me to name drop. <laughs> he's very cool. He's... Let's see. Let me drop some more lore while we're talking. While we're waiting. Unless, Samantha, did you want to, did you, are you still doing the boxes? I am still doing a little bit of boxes. I've got, I'm trying to pick my, um, favored, uh, uh yes. skills. So I'm reading through the, the two options that I have. Um, what, what exactly does favored mean with regard to skills? So, um, favored and ill-favored, basically you get to roll two feet die. So favored means you keep both of them. No, the best one of two. Mm -hmm. You pick, pick yeah, the best. Keep, yeah, the best okay. of the two. It's basically like advantage, disadvantage. Gotcha. Um, and then same thing for ill favor. You roll two feet die and you take the worst of the two. Okay. okay. Hmm. Those of you who haven't played PBTA, when I say advantage and disadvantage, it's like the same thing, except you roll two d6s and you either get, if you have advantage, you get to keep the higher. No, you roll three d three d6 and then you get to keep the two highest. Disadvantage, you roll 3d6 and you keep the two lowest. That helped, I have chosen. Excellent. All right, so while we're giving others a little bit more time, let's talk a little bit about the timeline. So in the year 2941, <laughs> Wizard Gandalf and Thorn Oakenshield and a bunch of dwarves visited Bilbo 
and you've probably all seen that movie and please if you've seen that movie please go read the book um no that set of movies was terrible um but basically um they started <laughs> no i'm just I, I i'd love to play this game with someone that's only seen like the rankin bass oh. <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> like that's their only exposure to the material at all that would be so That'd be great. Oh my gosh. So, so okay, so there is like this gap in my childhood. Like I, I've watched them all, but like evidently I just had forgotten big parts of them. Oh, because like the the uh, Happy Jacks uh, Discord this week discovered this, and they've been posting all the songs. Because for some reason I just like blanked out on the songs. Oh, they're memorable. They are so memorable. <laughs> and I was like, someone posted like a remix of one, and I was like. Oh, Frodo of the Nine Fingers. What is this bard <laughs> singing Frodo of the Nine Fingers in the background? They were like, <gasps> so they've just been like sending them to me. Love it's, those remakes. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I love it, but it, I'm not necessarily because it's good, but it's just like, yeah. okay. I love the hook in Frodo of the Nine Fingers, but um, the rest of the lyrics oh, are very bad. disappointing. I have a rap that has that in it. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I was like, you know. Roto of the nine, nine fingers, fingers yeah. and, and the, the ring, ring of, of doom. doom. And you're like, oh, okay, that's good. And then it's like all that's about terrible. Bilbo. And you're like, what, what, what? And there's a, no, anyway. I'm also a lyricist and a snob when it comes to that. <laughs> Clearly, though, the best Lord of the Rings song of all. Bilbo. Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. 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 Yeah. Bilbo. Yeah. Bilbo. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. The most, the, the most, like, The video most removed from the from the source material as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. It's incredible. Though. <laughs> yeah, Cannot, yeah, yeah. Um, so I haven't exactly decided when in the timeline we're going to be. Um, once I know who all the characters are, then I'll kind of come up with a story based on that, and then I'll kind of tell where the timeline is. But we're definitely after twenty nine forty one. Um, yeah, and. 2942 is when Bilbo returns to his peaceful life in the Shire. So it will probably be after that at some point. Um, on the character sheets, you see the little um, squares, and those are die. So you know. So that's like how you'll help calculate the number, what will be in your dice pool. At least on the regular character sheets, that's what it is. I hope it is on the ones I printed too. Do what now? Um, so you see how you have a little square that is the shape of a D6? Yes. Yeah. So you will, I believe, that's how many d6s you roll. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a little clearer on the like three league sheet because they're like at a little jaunty angle. So you're like, that is clearly a dice. Mm -hmm. But on the one I printed out, it's just a regular square box. There's a lot of square boxes There's on the a sheet. There's a lot of square boxes on the sheet. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I liked that it was on one, like all on one side. I knew like that. Flip it back and forth, but yeah, maybe it wasn't the best coil. Sorry. Everyone was commenting on the card. They're like, oh, it's so much better. Um, for those of you playing, uh, running along at home, it's by Jez Gordon. So if you look on itch.io, it's uh, Jez Gordon, J-E-Z-G-O-R-D-O-N dot itch.io. That it looks good, but they okay. may not be as functional as I hope. They seem to be, I mean, it's got all the spots. Seems okay so yeah. far. Yeah. I haven't yeah. run into anything. I'm like, I don't know where to put this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're very pretty. <laughs> That's really the first thing I look for in character sheets. Not necessarily functional. Um, <laughs> I think and, I have all the race stuff in. Uh, Perfect. I believe it also looks like if you're on the computer, this form is fillable. It is fillable. Mm. That is the best part about it. Oh, yeah. That's free. good to know. I noticed okay. the tiny reset form yeah. down in the printed form. Yeah. That will be going on my iPad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super good. Do this. All right. So, we calculated the character's target numbers. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wait, target numbers? No. Okay. <laughs> so your target number is the target number you have to beat. You start with 20 and then you subtract your attribute score and that's your TN for each attribute. Got it. So if you have a, uh, like 6, so you do 20 minus 6 and that would be 14, that would be your strength TN. I've been told that I am noticeably quiet. Oh, sorry. Oh. I think because I was leaning forward because I'm excited. 
and I didn't do my sound check that way. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's just like the universe getting back at me for all the times I've been like, you're too quiet, lean closer. Mind your mic. It's like, ha ha, now you are in the player chair. <laughs> well, I'm also not actively watching it because I'm writing stuff. Okay, right. I think I'm also so. sort of like half mumbling because I'm like not wanting to interrupt all of you. <laughs> so I'm like teacher mode. <laughs> teacher mode. I'm going to quietly explain to the audience. Wait, that's not very good because we're a podcast. Good job. All right. Um, so once you have your TNs. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you've determined your attributes, you've determined your TNs, or are in the process of doing so. Uh, have you calculated your drive stats? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic. Look at you all going ahead. Perfect. Uh, do you have skill and combat proficiencies yet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at you, all of them. Yes. This, this is the little checklist, so in case you're listening and wondering how to play. Um, choose your distinctive features. Have we gotten that far yet? Mm -hmm. I did. That's where I am. Okay. Well, let's go, let's pause for a moment then. Let's go through, um, and we've done uh, your attributes. And so we've calculated our target numbers. We just talked about how we can do that. So let's talk for a moment about the derived stats. So endurance is how long you can stay fighting in battle and uh, what you can carry without getting tired. And it's affected appropriately by strength. So, um, <laughs> Excuse me. So on the little character sheet, there's the strength, and then endurance is right down next to it. Heart is linked with hope, and then wits is linked with parry because I guess they needed a place to put that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Right. <laughs> I guess it makes sense. Like fast, like reaction time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see some logic there. Uh, so those are those are kind of the derived stats from that, um, and you'll be using those. So. Uh, some of them, uh, your affinity may also uh, affect those as well. So make sure that you're kind of keeping an eye on the blessings of your people and such things. Um, Perry obviously determines how hard it is for an enemy to hit you. Hope is what you use to inspire yourself and to get extra die in a roll. Um, when, so when rolling your skills and fighting enemies, um, you can spend hope to get extra die and things like that. So it's helpful. And bad things happen if you lose all your hope. Mm -hmm. um, you start having like negative uh, influences on your roles and stuff like that. Uh, I have notes about that somewhere. Where did I go? You become miserable. Yeah, miserable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. If you become miserable, the one, two, threes on the D6 all count as zero. Oh man! Ooh, so it's, it's that is miserable. It's rough. <laughs> you better all fucking stay hopeful, man. Like, <laughs> uh, and uh, inspiration lets you spend two uh, hope for two d six. So you can spend two, um, two, and then you can spend hope one hope for an extra d six usually in your rolls. Okay, okay. but don't spend it too freely because if you become miserable, half your die is a zero. Okay. It's bad. That's really bad. It's like, so we're reading through that. I was talking with Dave. I was like, "Ouch! That's like." Hardcore. I mean, it's a scary place. It is. Like, sure. <laughs> you see what happens when, like, Frodo loses hope. It's bad. Yeah. 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 Real fast. Yeah. All right. So, did we all? So, we are all figuring out our um, drive stats. Figured that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. Why don't we just go around the table and let's say, uh, say out loud what our, uh, let's do, just do target numbers for each of our stats and um, the derived stats. Okay. Just so people know how it goes. Why don't we start on this end of the table, Samantha, this time? I'll go first. Um, so I've got party. 16 for strength, mm -hmm. uh, 14 for heart, 16 is my target number for wits, um, endurance 24, hope 14. And Perry, 16. Yeah, so obviously, like, 14 hope, you can spend some, but... Uh, it's not the most. It's not the most. Mm -hmm. It's not the least. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. yeah. It's only any worse. <laughs> 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 oh, I've already made choices. How okay. did we get here? Um, my Elf of Linden mm -hmm. has a strength target number of 16, a heart target number of 16, okay. and a wits target number of 14. Mm -hmm. Um, my endurance is 24. 
so to tell people we are the same. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my hope is 12. Ooh. <laughs> you know the history of this place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it fits for the backstory that I've been kind of envisioning for okay. this. And then my parry is 18. Okay. Okay, so my hobbit has a strife TN of 17, a heart TN of 13, a wits TN of 16, a an endurance of 21, and a hope of 17. Ooh. Pretty good. Additionally, I also have a Valor Hopefully of 13 and a Wisdom of 16. Okay. All right. Uh, for Strength, uh, my Dwarf is fairly strong. 14. Okay. Uh, heart, 17. Not a lot of spirit. Uh, <laughs> uh, wits, 15. Endurance is 22. Hope is 11. Because I come from a people that had all of their stuff yeah, taken yeah. and it sucked right, really right, bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you get in this game, I guess? Yeah. 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 <laughs> You've seen <Ooh>. some shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, very nice. Okay. Uh, so you've got your skill and combat proficiencies. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Sorry, my teacher. I'm going to go down the checklist and just make sure for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So next is your distinctive features. Um, so every heroic culture uh, comes with a smattering of distinctive features you can choose from. Um, these are what set your character apart. And the skills associated with these features are uh, easier to accomplish if you use a hope point. Mm -hmm. So they can also help guide you um, like when you're role playing, kind of like when you things about you. I believe these are just specified in the the book it is like choices you can for each race, right? Mm -hmm. And they're on mm -hmm. 57 if you yeah. wanted to read them out. Yeah, do you want to read? Oh, let's read out the choices in the book. Or, oh, are there so a lot many. of choices? Yeah, there's many. Oh, okay. there are yeah. a lot of choices. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I picked mine, though. Yeah. Pictures? Okay. Everybody picked yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You guys are so fast at this. I'm <laughs> so slow at making characters, especially the name part. All right. Um, so my barding is going to be generous. Mm -hmm. uh, you give with open hands and, and heart, always mindful of the needs of others. And then, because I like opposites, um, her other uh, distinctive feature is fierce. When provoked, or when you deem it necessary, you may allow your savage side to emerge. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, so uh, my elf is going to be keen-eyed. Uh, the keenness of your eyes surpasses the mo that of most folk. Had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Felt like the rules here. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, and then wary. You are always mm -hmm. mindful of your surroundings and observant of the speech and behavior of strangers. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, you know, let me find That's those. Okay. Uh... Why don't we go to Dave next? Okay, sure. We'll yeah, yeah. 67. Yeah. Or plus or minus. Five. Yeah, I know. My, my, I'm, I'm working with the digital one, and so yeah, yeah, the paging is a little weird. But yeah, okay, go ahead, go ahead, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back. Uh, so my dwarf is cunning. Uh, your wit is sharp, and you're ready to use it at, to your advantage. And proud, you hold your feats and achievements or those of your people in high esteem. Oh. Hey, we got it back. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. I mean... Yeah. Tough times. Now you just have to work on that hope. So yeah. Yeah. About it's, that. It's, it's gonna get better. We're on the right road. <laughs> okay, so um I had a tough time choosing my distinctive features until I realized that there were a couple hyphenated ones. So I picked both hyphenated ones. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh so my hobbit is fair spoken. Okay. Your speech and manners are naturally pleasant and respectful, and your words rarely provoke offense. Uh, and they are also keen-eyed. Uh, the keenness of your eyesight surpasses that of most folk. Nice. All right, so don't plan, like, people coming from far away not being seen at this party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Noted. Two of us. One of us will be in the front, one of us will be in the back. Like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> All right, distinctive features, very good. Um, choose a calling is the next piece of character creation. So callings work like classes in most other RPG systems. Um, although you shouldn't expect like a long list of different skills like you would in D&D or something like that. Um, they really help you focus your role playing, uh, your character more than anything else. The system is very focused on role play. 
which is very cool. I love like the very um, intentional design towards that end. Um, and it does give you some bonuses though. So make sure that as you're going through, you're recording any mechanical changes to other things. I really love the art for this book too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. For, uh, all right, so I just got, um, oh, someone has my book too. <laughs> oh, I have your I'll book. take it. So I got the regular one, but I'll hold up Dave's in a minute. It's like this beautiful red bound, or he, he can hold it up, I guess. All right, <laughs> like, I'll, let me just mark beautiful, my page. Yeah, beautiful red bounds, mm -hmm. like with like the, yeah. the gold leaf on it. It's very nice. That's yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I'm very sad I didn't get it. But, that. Super props that all the books come with at least one bookmark yeah. ribbon. Oh, sure. yeah. I feel best. like that's like a requirement for anything like Lord of the Rings, Tolkien, -y, though. It's like you have to have the ribbon bookmark mm -hmm. like in the spine. Mm -hmm. it's a Absolutely. <laughs> we have a very large doggo in the studio with us this evening. <laughs> oh. He's keeping us safe. Um, um, all the wild things. Yes. In the callings, there's an uh, additional distinctive feature. No. Oh. Where does what does that do, and where does it go? That is a great question. I just wrote those. I wrote all my features in the features line. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Because yeah. I think it, I think it <laughs> functions like the other distinctive features. Oh, okay. okay. So they're not like mechanical necessarily. They're more like role playing guidelines or guides. Got it. I will look that up and make sure I have a very set answer for you by next game. Okay. Because I don't specifically know about that. That does make sense that it would go with the other Yeah, I think that is correct. It <laughs> seems very uh, reasonable. Yes. Um, Mine is a pretty messed up extra feature. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I picked Treasure Hunter. Oh, oh, me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I think I did read about these. I think these are just like to like flavor things a little bit more and to make mm -hmm. it more unique. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. just get to kind of okay. So mine was burglary. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> you have a burglar. I got two. Yeah. We're... Hey guys, welcome to Middle yeah, Earth Slime Spree. <laughs> Not the halfling in this party. I suppose. And I want to run like an Ocean's Eleven Middle Earth. Right. Yes. Oh, hey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice game. Yes. One of the episodes? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, and then after this, like, I'm going to go ahead and just say it out loud if you guys are in the process. Um, the next thing we'll do is add your previous experience, because obviously your characters were not born yesterday. We have life experience, so this can add this in as well. Um, So um, every character is given 10 points to spend on skill points in combat proficiencies. Um, there's a chart, it should be in your book, um, to follow to gain levels in these categories. Basically, the higher the level of skill, the higher the price to upgrade. That seems obvious, but I figured I'd say it out loud. Um, You have to purchase every level before moving on to the next. So if you want to take a skill from one pip to three, you have to use two points to bring it up to two pips. Okay. Then three more pips to level it up again. Does that make sure? Sense. Okay. Now, and please. I mean, I, I don't. I know I don't have to tell this group this, but if you're adding points to skills, please have like some sort of reason in your backstory, mm -hmm. even if it's just something you made up about why you were especially good at that thing, or why you're better at it than you were when you started your character. It's actually pretty much faster than I expected to. 
It's very like step by step when you really break it down. Yeah. yeah. The one question I have. Oh dear. Uh, in uh, picking out our starting gear. Mm -hmm. Um, we haven't gotten that far yet. We're just looking ahead again. <laughs> all right, I'll wait. I haven't got to that part of my notes yet. I'll wait. Okay, no, okay what's your question? I can wait. No, no, no. what's your question? Because then I like, can, like, look I, at... I understood the weapons. I, I just need to reread here and okay. find out armor. Because I know the idea is we all start with a whole setup because we're not yeah. children going off into the <laughs> woods. <laughs> See. One so weapon for each yeah. combat proficiency. Yeah. Now some of the armor has standard of living restrictions. Oh, that's how it's limited. Yeah, okay. Now I get it. Okay. Check. Go me for writing that down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. It's a good thing the dwarves are rich again. <laughs> <laughs> So the next piece, as Dave so kindly segued for us, will be them choosing their starting gear. Um, they have a, now this game does have a load rating, so it adds up from your weapons, armor, and the treasure you're carrying and stuff like that. So we do have to pay some attention to that. It adds to your fatigue, and you definitely don't want your fatigue to outmatch your endurance score. Mm. Obviously, it seems like something self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, and really, you don't even want to come close. <laughs> um, when any enemy, enemy hits you, you want room before you hit your fatigue score as your endurance is chipped away during fights. So make sure you have a little bit, a good cushion there. You want hope and you want endurance. Um, so you, while you're picking from your starting options, just keep in mind how heavy, how heavy everything is. Um, So it, the damage, it, everything has a damage and then uh, an injury rating. So uh, that means that, um, like for a spear, for example, it's four damage and it has an injury rating of 14. That means an enemy has to roll uh, their armor rating to beat that when trying to get a piercing blow and to avoid being wounded. So the higher the, um, the injury rating is, the more difficult it is for your enemy to be to dodge it or absorb it or whatever it is. So it could be worth it if you find something that has a high injury rating, even if it has smaller damage, because you will hit more often with it. Mm, nice. Where if something has a huge damage rating but a very low injury rating, it's probably like giant, it's like a big club or something, it's gonna be a lot harder to land a hit. So, hence, it may not be the best choice. <laughs> um. So for example, a dagger um, only does two damage, but it has also has an injury of 14. So it may be something that like you can whip, whip out if you really need to. Um, armor obviously gives you protection. Um, so uh, when somebody like is trying to do a piercing blow, um, you'll roll your d12 uh, plus however many d6s your armor says to roll to try and beat the enemy's injury rating. So basically, like, my spear has an, in, an injury rating of 14. Like, I'm going to, like, okay. Then you have to roll um, the number of die specified by your armor, and you have to beat the 14 okay. with the total. Um, and your feet, your feet die. You always roll your feet die. Which is, this is the one part of the system's, like, pretty crunchy. You're, like, mm -hmm. rolling to hit and rolling to defend. It's, like, a lot of rolling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
So that's something to keep in mind also when you're picking your your armor um, and also your the cost of living restrictions, which are specified in the book. So yeah, I think I also have prosperous. Excellent. In addition to our dwarf. That's always nice. Yeah. You get the fancy armor. Where is that? Um the oh, cost, the um, It'll be okay, in your culture. culture. Got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Of course, I'm approval. <laughs> that adds up. Yeah, Elves of Linden are not too great <laughs> at this point in time. No. So, travel gear doesn't really affect your fatigue, um, but your armor and weapons and things do. So, uh, you want some. You want some room to work with. So like if your armor and weapons add up to 11, but you have an endurance of 26, you've got a pretty good cushion there mm -hmm. um, to chip away. Basically, if those two numbers end up matching, then you start having a problem. Got it. Um, there are ways to carry more and increase your endurance as your characters develop and as they grow, um, but you don't want to start off too bad. This is the most interesting part of any tabletop RPG, the shopping part of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I will drop some more knowledge then. Um, so the, the, the aim of this game is to let players feel what it means to go on an adventure in wild and perilous, perilous lands from a forgotten past. Um, it's a threatening world, but um, has more in common with like the world depicted in epic sagas or the dark ages of Europe um, than with our contemporary world. Um, it's really meant to kind of be a bit escapist and to like kind of like leave the modern technology of our world behind. It really leans into like traveling time. So there's three different phases of gameplay that we use and they each have a little bit of different rules. Um, so there's the there's travel phase and you actually we will be rolling and it's the, the players have to actually like just choose their route and you know across an actual game map that has hexes on it and things like that and different sections of the map have different dangers and they'll roll die when we're doing the travel section um and there's like adventure which is where we'll spend the adventure um phase which that'll be where we spend most of our time um and then there's like the fellowship phase and every um four fellowship phases is basically one year of, of game time um, and we get extra stuff it's called yule so there's a lot of things that really lean into the passage of time how characters develop over that passage of time um, you can go home and you can have you raise heirs like this isn't going to be like a, an adventure that takes place in like a couple weeks or months like you can actually like give heirlooms to your heirs you can have heirlooms your own, of your own and there's like cool set mechanics for that it's very interesting um, and i'm excited to see kind of how that incorporates <laughs> and uh, so that that's i I, th I think that's a really neat addition that almost always I've, i don't think i've ever seen another rpg that has mechanics for like how you raise your family and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can put points into them as like you train them up and teach them. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's mechanics for if your character like passed away, can't you like step in as them or is that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's the whole idea. Yeah. Is like you start shuffling off your <laughs> treasure and experience onto an heir. Mm -hmm. And then if something happens to your character, the heir steps into the party as you. Yeah, the new you. and you can even like, it's actually how mechanically in the game, like weapons and armor and stuff get names. Mm -hmm. Like you can start to oh, yeah. create an heirloom thing that is passed down. <laughs> so then your kid now has, you know, your axe troll slayer or yes. whatever. <laughs> 
Gotta come up with better news than that. Come on. That is true. Pendragon did have air mechanics. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. I have never played that. Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting, and it and it, those uh, phases like will take full sessions. So it's not like in one in one play session you probably won't go through multiple phases. I was super stressed out before we started this. I'm like, I don't think I've read enough about this. And I'm like, wait, no, look at this. You did it. Knowledge is forthcoming. It's very <laughs> exciting. Really just a matter of, do I remember where I wrote it down? Because I'm not going to remember it out of my head. Just like, right. Like those professors in college are like, you can bring one three by five note card. Oh, God. <laughs> And you're like, the tiniest, yeah, the yeah, tiniest yeah. handwriting in the world. For me, it was always whatever I put on the note card. That's not what I forgot. Nope, no, oh, right, that's, that's, right. Right. that's the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. writing down. Yeah, it was always like what some bizarre, weird thing that I forgot to write on there. I would write in different directions based on what what it was. Oh, so it was like, okay, this. Oh, I know it's going to be this way. So all this of this way was about this particular topic, and then I'd flip it in this direction. It's probably a little bit complicated I, now. I had, a, I had a friend that legit made a three by five like microfiche and oh, came with a loop. Cool. Nice. <laughs> and was like, here's a seven chapter <laughs> on one three by five card. Dang. Yeah. Um, armor. Uh -huh. It's saying on here that um, it's talking about favored. Mm -hmm. um, so the favored, disfavored is where you roll the two feet die. So favorite is where you roll two. It's, you basically get to pick whatever armor you want, but there's a limit to how many pieces of stuff you get. Oh, based sure. Based on your... Uh, so elves and rangers, you get one item of, of armor. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's... Or, no, that's a useful item. item. That's Sorry. different. Yeah, no, that favorite, it's just like... It's not the mechanical favorite. Okay, so like, oh, okay. Yeah, italicized. Yeah. Oh. No, it's just yeah. your preferred... Uh, cool. Thing. That was kind of what I thought, and I was like... I'm looking for where it says favored yeah. armor. Yeah. <laughs> no, just whichever one you want to choose. Right. It's done. It's like, is, it is. It's favored capitalized? Like yeah. it's an actual yeah. thing? Yeah. Or is mm -hmm. it just. Okay. Yeah. Is it the mechanical capital F favored? Favored, yes. <laughs> oh, that t t shirt now. Capital F favored. <laughs> <laughs> In the font. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be funny to us. Yeah. And everyone else will be like, what? Hey, okay. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Those of you listening at home to the quiet, soothing, dulcet tones. Rustling of paper. Paper yeah. rustling. Pencil, <laughs> yeah, pencils on paper. Erasers. This is uh, real gaming in action. That's why you're here for Happy Jacks, is the real, <laughs> the real experience. Real that time it... choosing of yeah. <laughs> items. Yeah. I mean, not going to lie. Like, Part of my prep for this is watching other One Ring actual plays. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm Fair. Asia. It's a very good reference. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. We all set with things. Are we still making choices? That we're still shopping. I'm just figuring out my useful yeah. item. Same. Oh, okay, useful item. That's not pick from a list. It's yeah. That's a yeah. Start Do it in your head. Yeah. <laughs> Too many options. That's fun. For one of my useful items, though, I did pick a pony keg. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Attached to a pony. Exceptional. <laughs> you will have to name the pony. Obviously. One step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm giving you Name notice. the character yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. The name can't be Pony. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Hold quick, on. What's the dwarf word for Pony? <laughs> I wonder if there actually is one though. I'm sure. Such a... <laughs> Although that's the one language I don't think he completed. It, there's, it's really not complete, yeah, like, but there is enough. But yeah. I don't think pony would be a word that they would have because they're dwarves. Yeah, but it might have been a. Is there like a word it might have been a word cart? Tolkien might have <laughs> like, been like pony. I like ponies. Maybe Tolkien like I pony. Like pony. 
It's just like randomly that word. Ponies don't live in caves, but it's good to know. It's fine. That was actually one of the things about the Rings of Power that really bothered me at the beginning, and it's not like anything with the the plot at sure. all. But the elves in the first episode go and visit the dwarves. And I know it was because of COVID restrictions. Like, like they were trying to cut down on them. But they, like, walk. They, like, are walking up to, like, the big, you know, the dwarven major city. It's, like, these two very prominent elf lords. Just chilling and walking. And I'm, like... Taking a stroll. <laughs> walking. Like, and then I was, like... <laughs> luckily, the, the geniuses in the Happy Jack Discord were, like... Over restrictions can be because they're like, why yeah. are there no horses in the first episode? It's a fantasy thing. <laughs> and I also really like horses and I was sad. I was also, like, horse wrangling is, I've worked on shows with horses. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went through, I was a, a horse trainer for a big chunk of college. Oh, yeah. Um, and for all my childhood. Baby. And uh, yeah, that's a pain. But I'm also like, I want to see my pretty ponies. Yeah, babies, babies. I want to see good. the horses and the, the elvish horses that are going to be Andalusians that will love them. Yeah. Sorry, I got quiet again because I was talking about ponies. Oh my god, it's really like it's really fun and quiet. Okay. And for those of you wondering, we are using the Free League Games version, which I believe is the second edition, officially, mm -hmm. the second yeah. edition. Which was a little confusing because it's very similar to the first edition, but there are a few major differences. But when you're looking for cheat sheets on the internet, Read carefully. Yeah. You might spend half a day studying one only to realize, son of a bitch, it's the wrong one. <laughs> Don't know who did that. All right. So we have a pony. Um, and heads up, nothing bad will ever happen to the pony. You might all die, but the pony will, <laughs> the pony will live. You'll just trot <laughs> away. Good. Yes. Go live with Bill in the wilderness. <laughs> pony Utopia. Yeah. The next the next uh, game session will be just like the pony lives. Like we'll. Just oh <laughs> sure. <laughs> That'll be a side quest, right? Yeah, pony okay. quest. I think I'm yeah. done with all of my equipment. Okay. I have one useful item, and that's all I get. So it's a horse RPG that I backed on Kickstarter, and I now I don't know what happened to it. I have to look again. That might be fun. It's one of the things it. I'm like, wait a minute. I feel like that was like two years ago. It's waiting in your inbox you... to download, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did that a few, like, I like I think it was like a month and a half ago. I finally went through my spam folder. And there was 25 uh, Kickstarters that I'd backed. Like, wait, games just waiting there. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Part of it was the wood ring. I had the book, <laughs> but a lot of the digital stuff had just gone. I was like, oh, I should find that. I'm going to be running this game. I should, I should find that stuff. But yeah, it's a lot. I backed a lot of Kickstarters. I feel like all of us indie devs do. Like, it's just all of us passing the same money around back and forth to each other. <laughs> There's probably more truth to that than I'd really like to rock right now, honestly. All right. So, hi, my friend, you said you were all set with your items? Yes. Okay. Dave, are you set with your items? Yes. Okay. Everybody? Everybody, you're still working? I'm still, yeah. Take your time. Yeah, Take, your time. Take your time. We have provide thinking time. At the a table. couple useful items okay. to come up with, but okay, get there. All right. Okay, why don't we start with you then? Uh, do we want to know everything or just my useful uh, items? Like the, like, big picture. Like, I'm going to be a pretty light traveler. Okay. Um, so it's just a bow, long sword, of course, of elven make. Of course. Um, and a leather corslet. Okay. Um, keeping it very light. Uh, and then my useful item is an astrolobe, oh. but I want to tie it specifically to the lore skill. Okay. Because stars in Middle Earth are so important. Yes. This is why I picked this character. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who can't see, I have my little custom star glasses on tonight because stars are very, very important in Middle Earth, especially to elves. I love that you're here. I love like I can say things, and you're gonna get all the things that I say, and everyone's just like, "Oh, it's a nice thing to say about just stars." Eating yeah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is how I make all my friends. I run fantastic games, and people come and play. Not I don't run, but like the sis, the game. We run games here at Happy Jacks. The we, and uh, we just adopt awesome people. It's like that game. I'm so excited to be all right. here. <laughs> all right, Dave. It is your turn to share. No, uh, I am not a light traveler. <laughs> not even a little bit. That's why I have a pony. Cause not not at all. Um. 
uh, an axe and a spear mm -hmm. as my two weapons. Uh, the spear is usually like in a holster on the saddle of the pony with flags and ribbons from it. Um, uh, a mail shirt, a helmet, and a shield. Uh, probably usually wear the shield on the back right. most of the time. Yeah. Um, useful stuff. Uh, the pony keg, as aforementioned. <laughs> uh, a resin torch. Oh. Um, yeah. like a dwarven make kind of light instrument. Nice. Um, and a hammer. Just a, like a crafting hammer. Okay. To kind of bang out the shield when needed and that kind of thing. That's not bad. Yeah. Did you take, um, I'm sorry, you might have already said this. Did you take, like, blacksmithing crafting? Uh, yeah, it's a it's it's not Hard. a favored skill, but it is a skill I have. Okay, that's kind of the aim there. That makes sense. Cool. All right, uh, I can go next. Okay. Actually. So, um, all right. So my hobbit is equipped with a bow, okay, uh, and a spear. I was debating between a short spear and a long spear. Okay, I'm gonna go with a long spear actually because it's allowed, um, and I think for for. A short folk, a long spear might prove a useful tool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, short arms, so. Mm -hmm. uh, so is the long spear long to a hobbit, or is it a general long spear? It's, it's long to a hobbit. Okay. okay. <laughs> like regular size for okay. you know for the regular tall folk. I mean, we'll, we won't make you like change the stats. Like that. I'm sure. Like, yeah, for my for sure. mental picture of what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. it's 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 it looks long for my stature. Yeah. Uh, I have a sure. pony named Cheese. Um, <gasps> oh. <laughs> Uh, and I bring around with me, as I adventure, a lute, uh, because I like singing, and, um, uh, one of the motivations for my character that I've chosen is that I want to go out and sing the best songs, like, get material for the best songs, so that I can bring home songs. I have an important question. Is cheese from free? Uh, <laughs> you know? Oh my god, I was just thinking that. You read my mind. Cheese is now. <laughs> Only bad jokes. Okay. Cheese from Brie. In fact, I introduced the horse, the pony always as cheese from Brie. Oh. Uh, and a length of hardy rope. I was going to just do like a length of rope. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's got to be a length of hardy yes. rope. Yeah. That makes sense. Hobbit and grown it, hemp. What was that? Hobbit grown Hobbit hemp. Hobbit grown hemp. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and like as my, as my concept for the character uh, uh, crystallizes, I will tell you why I carry a length of rope with me uh, right. later. I mean, it also seems like a, a useful thing if you're going to go on yeah, an adventure. Yeah, a useful adventuring thing. When you would see, yeah, yeah. Maybe cheese like has a tendency to run off. So, <laughs> I mean, as someone in our modern day, when I go camping, I take extra rope with me. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I broke in my car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, meh. very useful thing. All right, Samantha, do you still need more time? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, I'm listening. I'm going to shut the door. So my combat proficiencies are in swords. So I have two swords, a long sword and a short sword. Variety. Sure. Um, and a male shirt, because if you're probably going to get stabbed, you want one of those. Yeah. Uh, and then for my useful items, I have a detailed set of maps for exploring. Mm -hmm. A hagstone that I use for scanning. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and some burgling tools. Because you might need to open a chest or two to get some treasure. Yeah. Um, and then I haven't named my horse. That's but... okay. That's a, that's a really important question. Yeah. So. That's okay. Um, so next, we need to choose our starting reward and virtue. Have we done that already? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. I've caught up to the players. Excellent. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing my checklist. I'm like, this checklist will make sure we don't forget any. Oh, they've, they've done it. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're way ahead. Good job. Um, so every character has certain power and renown as they adventure through Middle Earth. These are represented by the Valor and the Wisdom ratings. Um, so they help you fight, like, the Shadow, um, and you roll however many, many D6s as your level in these categories. Um, and they give you rewards and virtues. Rewards offer better gear, and they're kind of represented as the hero getting stuff for their brave deeds, slaying a dragon, getting a cool, you know, ring or whatever you do. Um, Virtues in this uh, come from getting a little wiser and more experienced in the world. So these represents you growing as a character as we go through our world. And um, there are also cultural virtues of specific abilities that are specific to each of the heroic cultures. Um, 
it's fun looking at some of the things. They're very cool. Um, but uh, cultural virtues only come when you level wisdom up to two. Okay. So, um, so all heroes start with a one in both valor and wisdom. And uh, then you get a reward or virtue. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No player character gets to choose a virtue and a reward. Ooh. Sorry. The and and the or are very important differences. And I think if I remember correctly, um, this can be like where you pick like a little bit cooler of a weapon or named weapon or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Your weapon or, or armor might be a little bit better. Yeah. And there's like the quick list on page 51. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. I choose rewards and virtues. Oops, there's a longer list. Uh, I think uh, I think I've, I've settled on my horse's name, Ooh. Wadsworth, <laughs> uh, because I think my dwarf was traveling and uh, some human on the road yelled, "Hey, what's he worth?" And oh. I didn't wear <laughs> press to wear my helmet, so I was like, "Oh, it's a good name. Yeah, all right." That's incredible. Yeah. I, I love it. Very good. So we have cheese, cheese, and Wadsworth. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to do a horse episode. This happens for every game that I run. <laughs> I did uh, the Wild Talents Western game a few years ago, and everyone had their horse, and that, that was one of my plan eventually. Run the horse episode where you all played as your horses. <laughs> I think we might have to do it. I'll see. I have to find if I have that. Maybe I'll write a game for it real quick. I'm writing a, a unicorn game right now, but it's a little different. I don't know if it'll work for. I don't think any of your ponies have firepower, right? Or wind power? No? Okay. I mean... I'm going to say no. I don't. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> cheese, I might, cheese might have wind power. If you stand behind them. You know. That is canon now. Those ponies of Brie. <laughs> cheese is a bit of a, a drafty pony. Oh, uh, the drafty. A draft oh, horse. Draft <laughs> pony. I love it. <laughs> Very good. Oh, I love that my horse humor. You got the horse humor. This this it. is a supplement waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah. um, Community content for the One Ring. Yeah. Listen, they go into enough detail about the horses in Lord of the Rings. Oh, they could, do. Yeah, it's important. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I have my rewards and okay. virtues. All right. I'm going to choose Grievous for my weapon. The okay. weapon is strong and heavy, inflicting more harm on its target. So okay. I get to add one to the damage. Yes. I'm going to add does, that to my longsword. Great. And it doesn't um, affect the injury rating at all, though? It does not. Oh, that's cool. There's a, di uh, there's a different one, Fell, that it, uh, affects the injury rating. Got it. I was kind of torn between the two. Yeah. Well, I just didn't know if it was heavier, if it would like slow it down. But then why would you want to pick that as a... Yeah, that would... Yeah, it wouldn't be helpful. I'm being way too logical about things. I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, and then for virtues, I'm choosing confidence. Okay. Overcoming difficulties has reinforced your spirit and renewed your faith in a brighter future. Raise your maximum hope by two points. Nice. Wow. Um, I am less sad. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice if you could just buy less sad in the real world. I know, right? Mm. I'd like to spend some character points on less sad, please. <laughs> Accurate. Kimmy will not hurt the pets. Uh -uh. <laughs> Chat was like, if you name your name your pony, then Kimmy will be less likely to hit them. I'm like, I would never <laughs> hit them. Oh my god. Ponies good. Ponies are the best. Ponies thing. have plot armor. <laughs> Absolutely. Best kind of bargain. They, even more than that, they have Kimmy plot armor. Oh, like, oh. I'm sorry, you 
Pony is a little tired. We're sleeping. <laughs> Ponies are living their best okay. lives. Every night, yeah. I, I camp underneath the pony. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from experience, that is not a great place to be. No. <laughs> I would spend that whole time just like, it's going to step on me. It's going to yeah. step on me. It's going to step on me. Just one shift and there's a hook suddenly in your chest. Yeah. I, uh, I got my hand stepped on once. Oh, ow. Oh, no. yeah. but just, I have no idea how like the ground like, was a little um, wet because it had rained. And like, I went to the, the ER because I was like, sure, because we were yeah. doing a parade with a bunch of the horses. And um, I was I was uh, cleaning the hooves of one horse while this guy in like this armor walked by and like spooked it and it like reared. And I put and I like put my hand down and it like landed. So I was like, ah, that is my hand. I'm sure it's broken. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. went to the yard, ER, no broken bones. Oh, wow. Like, wow. So we're, like the ground had just been just barely soft enough in yeah, that yeah, one yeah. spot. Like all the doctors kept coming around because I had this like bruise in the shape of a horseshoe, uh -huh. and all the doctors kept coming around going, "Now what happens?" There's not, and they just kept looking at the X-rays like, "What?" It's like, I'm not gonna ask any questions about this. Yep, yep. <laughs> they got really, really dark purple though. <laughs> it's very, very, very big shape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like oof. All right. <laughs> I once experienced the other reason why you don't want to sleep underneath an animal. Oh. When a wild oh. boar decided to come and pee on me while I was sleeping in my sleeping yeah. bag. Yeah. Yeah. Where was this? Catalina. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sleeping outside, woke up, heard, and I was like, that's a big boar. Like, boars kill people. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to mess with it. Like, I, So I'm just trying to lay there, keep my breathing regular. Yeah. And then it was just like, hey, guess what? <laughs> oh no. And just soaked my whole sleep. Just reeked. Oh. Horrible. A smell you'll so never sorry. get rid of. Yeah, right. Oh, it's okay. terrible. I think I'm ready. Um, I have chosen close fitting leather armor. Okay. Um, because it's very well made. Yeah. Uh, and prowess. And I'm actually going to lower my target number for my heart by one. Oh, okay. That's great. All right. You're still working on your choices? I'm ready. Uh, I, I picked a uh, fell axe. Okay. Uh, for oh, garbage, I wrote the wrong thing down. <laughs> I too was debating between grievous and fell. So you that's it's the one trait. that drops the this injury. The injury rating uh, increases by two. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. Not and an axe's injury rating more is injury, already not less. Mm -hmm. uh, They have to roll higher to avoid. Is what I, yes. 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 There's a lower chance that they will avoid it. Yes. I am saying this as confusingly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Hope this helps. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the axe's injury rating is already 18. Ooh. So at wow. 20, it's pretty Ooh. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, for my uh, virtue, I picked hardiness for an extra two endurance. Okay. Nice. Um, I chose a cunning make buckler. And so that reduces my buckler's load by two. Okay. Um, because, you know, my, my endurance is already pretty low. <laughs> uh, and I chose hardiness as well um, so that I can raise my endurance by two points. Okay. So it makes me a little, little tougher at least. Perfect. All right. So the next part is choose your name, age, and story. The hardest part of any character. Age. I mean, not the story part, but definitely the name part. I came pre-equipped with a name because I knew it would take me forever. Yeah. So I have a name. I'm going to pick an age and then I'll do both. Excellent. Um, I picked one of the names that they give as an example. Um, but let me know if it's some famous dwarf that I don't remember. Dwarves do that, though. Yeah. They, well, they sure, but, but... I feel like they probably wouldn't list the famous ones in the book. But... No, there's... Oh, yeah? Oh. Or real close, anyway. Oh, well, yeah, they're all close. Uh, but Hanar... Oh, no, that's a good one. After my favorite Mass Effect race. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes, I love the Hanar. Yes. <laughs> it's like Hanar. H A N A R. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah. You're not son of Thanar. I don't tell that sorry. to other people. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm a burglar. I don't know around <laughs> giving people my last name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Very nice. Okay. 
Thanks, you want me to walk around with my address on my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> like, if this dwarf is lost, please return <laughs> to the Lonely Mountain. Yep. If found. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, and I went with 65 HP. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be hard for you. <laughs> I picked this because I knew that my brain would be like, okay, let's go. We're going to go deep in it right now. Yeah. I had to do a race that I knew I would be able to, like, put all the pieces together. <laughs> yeah. That's why we do it. Yeah. All right. Very good. Anyone else have a name or a story? So this is the one that's going to take the longest because this is the part of the character creation. It's all up to the imagination. There's mm -hmm. no tables. It's the hardest part. Yeah, I do like that they have the, the name suggestion. That's fun and helpful. And a little intimidating. Uh, like, story idea-wise, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted my dwarf to be like a traveling salesman. Okay. Uh, merchant sort mm -hmm. of thing, so I, I carry some goods on the pony and go from town to town and sell stuff in one town and uh, buy or light finger things to sell in the next town. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I kind of probably have a sort of regular route. Okay. So people from all over probably have seen me at some point. Yeah. And it... I have an idea for mine. Okay. Um, so my character's name, I picked one of the ones from the book also, just because it's hard to think of, and yeah. I didn't want to. And if they have a good one, then you know, yeah, so go for it. No worries. Um, so her name is Runa. Mm -hmm. um, and she's 26. The Bardings generally start adventuring about 18, so mm -hmm. she's been doing it a little while, but not super experienced. Okay. Um, and she comes from a family of treasure hunters, mm. so um, it's passed down uh, through the women, so her grandmother and her mother were treasure hunters, um, and that's kind of how they're prosperous, mm -hmm. um, but they're good at it, so they give it away a lot. That's why she's generous. Oh. So a little bit of a Robin Hood situation. Okay. Uh, that's where the burglar comes in, steal from the rich, give to the poor. I love that. That's cool. You said Runa? Yeah. Okay. So we have Panar and Runa. Um, yeah, I do think it's in the book about the races at the beginning, but it might be earlier um, about like keep in mind their uh, age and the rate they age. So yeah. in some races, a twenty year old is still very much a child. Yeah, but obviously for the Bardings, it's not. Yeah, they yeah. tend. It says they tend to stop adventuring around forty. Yeah. So they don't want to make her too old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, forty so old. I know. <laughs> well, I sure as hell wouldn't want to be still going out and. Fighting no, crazy absolutely. shit in the woods. Sure. <laughs> no way. I'd be happy at home by now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> you got me to come all the way here. I know. It's amazing. It's true. Yeah. I think of like just trying to like get the pajamas on my toddler. Like, I don't know about fighting actual monsters <laughs> at this point. That's so hard. So hard. Why is it so hard? <laughs> Yeah, the, the dwarf range is 50 to 95 is their adventuring years. Yeah. I have I have kind of a... I have a bit of a bone to pick with the age limitation mm -hmm. for elves, oh, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like a, a straight lore thing, which mm -hmm. is that um, you can do whatever you want, obviously. Yes. Uh, but the, um, the elves are said to largely retire from adventuring around 300. Which is extremely young yeah, for an elf really like weird. Middle Earth, including that I think where your story is going to be set somewhere in there, there hasn't been an elf born in like 3,000 years, yeah. according to the book. So mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, maybe they're missing a zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they just kind of like picked a what sounded right. Like they yeah. did a lot of research for that, but that also seemed very young it's to me. Very I was like, young. Oh, it's very little, little ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe it's specific to this area, but that still doesn't make still sense. Still doesn't either. make sense. I was trying to figure that out too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. There's not any mechanical issues with age, so I do what, do what you want to do. <laughs> be true to yourself. Um, and how old do you want your your elf to be? 
the good news is the kind of concept that I have, he's not going to have done a lot for a lot of that time. Okay. So it That's kind fine. of wouldn't pay fruit in any logical sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to be a, a born around the turn of the second to the third age. Okay. Um, but having spent most of that time in Mithland, mm -hmm. and his name is going to be Erland okay. of Mithland. Very nice. Like E R L I N D? A E R L I N D. Erland of Mithland. Yeah, and so that's beginning, turning point of the ages. That's a pretty good point. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, um, so uh, my hobbit is at the age of 36, a little mm -hmm. older, mm -hmm. uh, because they were a sheriff of the Shire, oh, one of the sheriffs. Okay. Um, and so they were called to kind of keep order among the various, you know, the various folk of the Shire, uh, which is why they have a length of rope. You know, you kind of come across a drunken, you know, a drunken hobbit, and <laughs> they're not calming down. You it's tie them up to a tree for a for for a night. <laughs> you wait on, you untie them. Okay. Uh, and I have gone with the name Burl Brandy Bottom, okay. like Burl Ives, Brandy Brandy hyphenated bottom. Uh, but Burl goes by the nickname Sausage, so I'm Sausage and Cheese. <laughs> Okay, uh, you will be required to tell me how you got the nickname Sausage before oh, we go home tonight. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it is it is sort of uh, Burl's physique. Okay. It's like about, you know, as, as wide across as he is. And you said Brandy Not Bottom. Brandy Bottom, yeah, okay. Brandy Dash Bottom. Fantastic. Because my features are all hyphenated, as is my shadow. <laughs> okay. I figured I'd go with it. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm here for it. Excellent. All right. And, uh... With that, I think that is our characters. Very exciting. We did it. <laughs> yep. We did it. Does anyone have any questions about this? I mean, I know you'll have questions about how to play, but we'll worry about that next session yeah. with the exact mechanics. Um, I think we all have a broader show. Is there anything on your character sheet that you're like, I didn't fill this in, or I don't know what this is? No? Okay. No, no. Just the, uh, no, I don't think so, yeah. Just the, you know, fellowship and stuff Yeah. part. Yeah. Which we do later. I don't think we do that as part of this right now. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. I mean. The, yeah, the fellowship. When we when we do the fellowship phase, you get more stuff. Got so it. you have to build in that. Stuff. No, I mean like the the figuring out like our patron and. Oh yeah yeah. And that stuff like our safe haven, like where we kind of That's right. congregate that stuff. I did not write that on my list. Here, one second. It's also not on the character sheet. The company, <laughs> not the fellowship. Oh okay. Like, I'm like wait. Bit. All right. So let's it's see. on fifty one. Okay. Going into 52. Okay. But that also depends on you, if you already have an idea mm -hmm. for who you might want our patron to be, or... Um, I was going to play... We're going to play a game called Decima for a few sure. minutes for that. Um, but thank you. That that does give us things we need to uh, keep in mind for this. I'm sorry, you said 51? Yeah. Yeah. 51 uh, to 52. 51 to 50, 52 is really where it picks the, up. Yeah, the PDF numbers do not match the page mm -hmm. numbers. One yeah, moment. it's always like that. three ish. <laughs> yeah, uh, I always forget. Add four. Ah. Add four, okay. All right, the company. I found it. Um, so, this part, um, we will be doing, we need to come up with a patron. And that is the person who uh, kind of helps us. Um, this is like, Usually, like the, where you drop the name, the character from the movie, from the, the from the movies, from the stories, like this is Bolin, or this is Bilbo, or Gandalf, or whatever it is. Um, I'm also totally cool with us coming up with a new person. I would almost prefer that, mm -hmm. um, because that's just so fun, and just kind of making up our own story, and then we don't have to worry about that person. Where would they be in this point? And like we can just do whatever we want. Um, our safe haven is basically kind of where we come back to, um, let's see, let me find the descriptor of it exactly so I make sure I do it, um, is a location that works as like kind of the starting base of operations for the group. So this is where we come back to and our time off and we're, if accomplished our specific task at some point, we come back here and we may then like 
break apart and like go home and stuff like that. But this is where we generally start and end the adventures. Um, let's see. And we don't, we absolutely don't burn it down. Right. We, That's not part of it. I mean, we want someplace to come back to. Be. Preferably. <laughs> Probably not. And that's You're, so safe if we burn it down. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I forgot this isn't DD, so. <laughs> yeah. You are player around. characters, so I'm not going to ever rule it out completely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we need to determine the company's fellowship rating and then choose a fellowship focus. Um, but for, so the fellowship rating, um, you're more than like a band of roving mercenaries. Like, you're not just here for money and like that. This is like where they're like, this is not D&D &D without saying that yeah. specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, expressed by numer numerical value, fellowship is a pool of points shared among all the player heroes that is mainly spent to recover lost confidence. So um, during an adventuring phase, player, player heroes can spend points um, from the fellowship to recover points of hope when resting and things like that. So um, it's sort of similar if you've played masks to like the team pool and some aspects of it um so and then we'll be uh and it, it the fellowship can also be spent to trigger special effects tied to the company's patron so cool. um there's a specific patron chart so if we come up with our own patron i'll just like be this guy's the closest it'll be fine um and so we can calculate that and then the fellowship's focus rating represents the loyalty that the adventurers feel towards each other um, but some of them might share an additional level of companionship to another member of the company, such as a bond. So like Legolas and Gimli became very close friends and they like had a little bit stronger bond. They all were very loyal to each other, but they were like besties. So that sort of thing. Um, such a bond may be due to the respect felt for someone wiser or nobler, such as a special friendship shared uh, or a share, share, special friendship shared with an old acquaintance, kinship shared with a fellow compatriot, something like that. Um, family members, etc. Um, each player can choose one member of the company. Let's okay. We're gonna pause this for a minute because I want to play Jackie Mark first because mm -hmm. that'll really fill in like the character connections between us, other than just like making it up as we go. Mm -hmm. So this is a game called Jackie It is a tarot-based world-building game made by uh, Golden Lasso Games. I don't know who they are, and. So we're going to be playing a little bit of a modified version of it. I think these have been shuffled. This is a new box. So, okay, I'm going to shuffle them real quick. Um, these, uh, we will not, we'll be building a location questions, but we will be taking, we will be um, in this general location. So we're just going to add details um, to our safe haven. So first we should probably decide what we want that to be. So do we want it to be a, any ideas? Do we want it to be a specific place? It cannot be the Prancing Pony, I forbid it. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be another tavern if you want it to be. It can be, um, really should have sorted these cards before I replayed, sorry to our amazing audience. Um, it could be one of your homes, it could be, um, a place that is lucky or spiritual to someone. It could be a place on the road that you just happen to meet and like camping there. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do character connections a little bit before we start doing that? Yeah, I think that, that might, might help. help. Yeah, okay. I think it would too. Okay. Um, let's see. And um, just to remind everyone, the X cards are in play. So if someone comes up with something that they want to add to our setting or system, and it's something that you're not comfortable with, just tap the X card and we'll pull away from it without any explanation needed. Um, and if you are you have an idea for something and you're not sure if it fits in the world or not, feel free to ask um, or just add it and go for it. I think your dog just opened the door. Yep, yep your dog just opened the Generous. door. Come here, bud. Hi, Lovish. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see if I, it's been a minute since I've played this game. So let's, let's see. All right. So everybody will get a card. You get to put them in front of you in any order or any configuration you like. Upside down. The art is on it. It's pretty amazing. Okay, someone named Samantha Terry. Weird. I don't know who she is. She sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
They're so beautiful. <laughs> I get compliments all the time. I'm like, yeah, that's the part I didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you get one purple card. Uh, so these are the World Dynamics cards. Keep all the cards face down in front of you, please. Doesn't matter. You can spin it. Some people like it because when you flip it over, the way it's facing does influence what questions you get. So, ooh, here we go. This is so very well planned. This is fun. This is the first time I've gotten to play with the finished card. I know. Oh. Yeah, it took a, it took a minute. Like, yeah, the last weird. time I played, we had the like test decks. The test, <laughs> the art I bought like online. This like random tarot deck that was like, okay, I'll just buy these. It'll be. I had like four <laughs> decks printed to like play test them at conventions because the the three by five cards I was using and not or no I bought like the Miss Cleo deck on Amazon <laughs> and, had, and did like label maker questions Amazing. and so that way you oh, can still no. kind of but they were like that was like the very first version that wasn't just like a chart yeah. but it's like they were getting pretty pretty rough to shuffle so <laughs> all right so you get two of those thank you um if at any point you get a card that you don't like or it's a boring question or we've already answered it you can exit and I will give you a new card Thank you. All right. Thank you. No problem. Cool. All right. Look handy, people think. In an RPG. Weird. <laughs> Not... Weird. So strange. Um, so we're going to play this a little bit out of order because I want us to get our character connections before we start building our world and the, our location. Um, and before we start doing our... Um, World dynamics. So we're going to be focusing on the red cards. So I'm going to go around the table. Everyone's going to flip over when I point at you. Um, one of your red cards. It doesn't matter which. Be creative. Some people lay them out in like very intricate patterns, and some people just put them in a row. It's fine. But when you flip it over, flip it over and leave it. Don't like spin it or twist it because it matters. Doesn't matter that much, but it's part of the fun of it being like a tarot inspired game. Um, so yeah, you will just go ahead and read the prompt off. For these questions, there's a blank. You will fill the blank in with the name of another player character. So just reminding everyone, we've got Hanar, he, him, yes. who's our dwarf. We've got Burl Brandybottom, AKA Sausage, he, him, who's our hobbit. We've got Aeland. Aeland. Uh, Aeland, okay, sorry. And he's also I wrote it. Yeah. He, him. He, him. Yes. Actually, I think he's going to be he, they. He, they? Okay, perfect. Erland uh, of, Mith of Mithland. Um, he, they. And we've got Runa, she, her, mm -hmm. who is a bardling. Yes. Perfect. Um, and feel free if you, like, don't have an answer, like, hey, this is my... Who do you... Who feels... It's very free form. All right. Let's have. Hey, you're new. Why don't you flip yours over? Okay. Right? Any of the red ones. Okay, here we go. Uh, so I read the one that I can actually read. The correct? one at the top, yeah. yeah. Or the one that's facing you. Blank could help you get something you want if you'd ask. What keeps you from asking? We have two thieves. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very tempting to pick one of our thieves. Um, I think. Just because uh, I want to start us, I think in the in the traditional, um, I think it's going to be Hanar, okay. and the thing that would obviously stop uh, Aeland from asking is I don't think he's ever asked anything of a dwarf. Ah, uh -huh. I like it. It's nice. Very good. And what what is the thing? Um. If you don't know yet, that's okay. I don't know yet. I'm starting to piece it together. Don't forget. I'm going to write it. Yeah, we're going to have down. to come up with that. Yep. All right. Well, we're just going to have it pass along then. So, Dave, why don't you flip over one of your red cards? Blank reaffirms everything I believe in. Do you share ideals or do their poor choices strengthen your resolve? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Pretty good. Hmm. You know, I think it's probably Burl, okay. uh, because I I really like 
I probably haven't spent a lot of time with hobbits. Mm -hmm. And I think I really like the sort of free spirit kind of thing and the the music, right? Oh yeah. Like I think I think Hanar is definitely not one of those great bass singing dwarves. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so I think he's like, oh, look at that music. It's totally different than when I get back <laughs> home, and I love it. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that it's the the spirit of adventure and mm -hmm. and the fact that you're just incorporating your music in all of it. I think that's really what yes. what Hanar's into. That was the one one of the things that there was a lot that I really loved about the Rings of Power. But one of the things was they they kind of added some lore about the dwarves using song as how they found ore in the mountains. It is so cool. Like they did that. I just gave me goosebumps. I was like, that mm. is so perfect. I love everything about that. That's really cool. It's very cool. So I love that tie-in of like music, like being something you're drawn to and like yeah, yeah. interested in. All right. Well, let's keep passing it around okay. since we're going. Blank harmed you once, but they don't know you realize it was them. Ooh. Um, and it does not have to be physical harm. It can be any type of of harm. Financial, emotional. Sure. Um... Ooh, that's a that's a tricky one. Um, I think I'll go with with the other burglar in the group, <laughs> and go with Runa. Okay. Um, boy, and I really have to put some thought into this. Okay, you can you can pause if you want to, but we I want to come back to it. I don't want you just to name the person and then not fill out the yeah. information. But sure. if you need a minute of thinking, that's okay. She is fierce, so it's not unlikely. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking actually that. We were being, st we were going after one of your burglar pursuits, mm -hmm. and I was helping you out. And um, in the heat of the moment, we we had to be like deathly still, or we were going to get caught and face some pretty major consequences. Uh, in the heat of the moment, um, as you were going after your quarry. Um, you slammed my my fingers in a window or something. <laughs> oh, no. And I couldn't say anything. I was just, like, sitting there, like, ah. And that's happened. I mean, I've had my hand, like, stuck in a car window. Mm -hmm. And so oh, that, that hits home. That has happened to me. Um, and, 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 and again, in the heat of the moment, you just did your thing and you left. And I just had to get my, extract myself from that situation. Yeah. And I haven't yet told you for one reason or another. Hmm. Okay. All right, so I have accidentally mangled Burl Brandy Bottom. Sausagey fingers. <laughs> hmm. um, while you write that down, I think I figured out what I have not asked okay. about. Perfect. Um, because I think Aeland is trying to walk the world and, and learn things before all the elves leave. Yeah. Um, and I think he's so curious about dwarves because they're so removed from elven society. Mm -hmm. And I think he wants to ask um about dwarven culture and dwarven like stories in particular mm -hmm. and tell me the stories of your people but mm. never asked a dwarf for anything i don't know how to do this yeah. <laughs> and that's a pretty pretty personal thing to yeah, ask yeah. too it's not hey. like hey got a beer like yeah, yeah asking about about a culture that somewhat an, like a little bit of a tense tense yeah. situation there yeah, yeah. well and and um, Mithlin is so sea and yeah. you know the idea of living underground is so foreign yeah. and I think that the whole idea is just like I have no idea where to even start this conversation <laughs> yeah <laughs> very good alright uh, let's see oh did you already do one? no I didn't I oh. just flipped this okay. one to read it um, blank can usually read you like a book, whether you want them to or not. Mm. Hmm. That's a tough one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> lay down. There's so many new smells in here. Um. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with Erland because of your keen-eyedness. I feel like uh, he would be very observant um, and probably spot my fierce moods coming on before I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. I like that. That makes perfect sense. 
All right, so now we end that round with me flipping over a card. Um, our group fought our way out of a serious situation. What was it and what happened? So as I specified before we started streaming, our group is not just going to meet each other. Like I want us to have some shared history. And uh, so, yeah, we, we have been through something before and we fought our way out specifically. So what was it and what happened? Hmm. Trying to think of something geographically interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's um, the Barrow Downs are in the area. Mm -hmm. um, the Weather Hills where there are, are bandits. Uh, I'm going to be 100% upfront with all of you. Geography is my Achilles heel. Looking at a map with of all things. Hill. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, still I... use my GPS to get around North Hollywood. So, good. <laughs> memorizing all of Middle Earth is not a thing that I'm. No. I, I know the vague directions and I know the names of places. Yeah, there's dangers everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. Do we want to have been attacked by like a whole pack of wolves? Oh. Mm, like a big pack of wolves? Like, Fenris inspired. Really hungry, <laughs> really hungry wolves. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. I'm with that. Maybe that was like one of your very first like adventures. It's like. Like, hey, look, I can still see the city back there. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what if we were being chased down by a, by a pack of wolves and we found ruins mm -hmm. somewhere out in the wilderness and that ended up becoming our safe haven. Oh, oh I love that. That's fun. Yeah. There's so many good so ruins. Creepy ruins. That. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we just have to determine what kind of ruins. Maybe it was a, a, up in a hillside or up mm -hmm. on, on a tree or something somewhere. Something with strategic advantage. Which is why we were able to drive the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Safe haven, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is why we were able to drive the wolves off. Awesome. Cool. See, I knew this would work out. <laughs> the wolves adventure. Very good. Just look at there definitely would be a ton of ruins here. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to actually pick ones that are marked on the map or if we want to make our own up. I have to I also don't know if this cool poster map is the same as it's not the same as the the actual hex map that's in there. Oh. So because there is at one point when we do the traveling phase, mm -hmm. there's the hex map where we have to you work we as in you need to choose your route and then we roll based on um, like what's happening. So we find out what happens and what you run into. Those are the GM less plan less planning days. All right, so we'll just say runes for right now. I like the idea of, like, we kind of keep them secret. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we don't want other folks to know they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking, what if it's uh, what if it's by a river or, like, in the middle of a river? So it's actually easy to hide tracks. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll pick up, so we'll make up our own ones. They won't be on the yeah. map. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Make it up by water. Used to be question mark, question mark. Ours now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Very good. I think I might see some etchings on the stone that indicate ownership, but we're just going to ignore that. <laughs> if they come back, we'll pack up right. and leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, well, this this specific part of Middle Earth has a very long history, so the ruins, the people who own the ruins here are long gone. Sure. They're very gone. <laughs> yeah. sure. Hopefully long, long gone. Long gone. I mean, Likely long gone. Yeah. But if they happen but, to come back, yeah, yeah well, for some reason, <laughs> yes, because nobody ever comes back in Lord of the Rings, yeah, <laughs> never, never <laughs> happens, nothing, totally, totally fine. Uh, all right, so let's start with uh, an, our next, let's do another red card because I feel like this is very fruitful. Um, Jay, do you want to start? Sure, you knew blank before joining the group and were jealous of them. Why? Um, I knew Hanar 
before joining the group because they were passing through. You were passing through the Shire okay. as a uh, traveler. And at this point, I was still very entrenched in my duties. Uh, and I was jealous of you, like, being free to travel. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, and um, I was... I like that mechanic. I was very uh, enthralled by your worldliness. Okay. I dig that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Nice. We're going to go, we're not going to pass it around this time. Uh, we're going to go out of order. So why don't we do Samantha next? Okay, let's see what mine says. Blank gave you good advice at a crucial moment. What happened? Um, I'm going to go with Hanar. I think as our, my fellow burglar, okay. you might sure, have sure. given me some uh, burgling advice from a dwarf's perspective. That I didn't consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's cracking, but you actually cracked the safe. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I don't have burglar tools. I have a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of guns. Yeah, I was joking, but yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. Uh, which is basically what happens in the new Hellraiser. At the beginning, no spoilers. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I like that. Like I was trying to like finesse... The thing open, and you don't like, have time for this. Why don't you just hit it with your sword, idiot? <laughs> <laughs> like, they're gonna know someone stole it anyway. <laughs> when they... Very good, excellent. All right, Kai. Okay, here we go. You want blank to try something new. What is it, and why haven't they done it yet? Hmm. hmm. I think I want good old sausage to try something new. Um, I don't know, like, what are, what stuff that Burl hasn't done? I'm thinking, like, Erlen's experience with a lot of, like, boats and things like that that are not common in the Shire. Oh, sure. So maybe, like, going, like, actually being in a boat. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe I'm not comfortable like around water in general. Oh. <laughs> I'm just, like very rooted to the ground. So so That's our cool. safe haven is uh that could be a bridge. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, I don't like getting my feet like wet because a lot of water is it's kinda up to my chin. Oh no. Not no. necessarily so much up to your knees. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So maybe, like, you've probably been in, like, little rowboats or, like, rafts to go across, like, fairy rafts. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you've been in, like, elven ships. Yeah. 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 And, like, oh, ships, they're beautiful. They're amazing. Yeah. That's yes. I, that's why I think he hasn't traveled, because he spent so much time just being a shipwright. Yeah, exactly. Making boats. <laughs> Very nice. I like it. All right, I think... That's me, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like we've already kind of answered this one. Okay. Uh, so can I have another piece? Yes, you might. Hmm. Uh, I'll go with blank makes you wonder what life would be like if I had chosen a different path. Hmm. What do I regret? Oh. Hmm. And I think it's probably Erland mm -hmm. because you spent so much time with your people. Mm -hmm. And I probably didn't. Oh. Mm -hmm. I kind of got to the age of majority and hit the road. Maybe under circumstances that <laughs> I don't really like to go back there too often. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, I think it's probably like uh, I I don't I didn't spend a lot of time with the dwarves back home. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Is that everyone this round? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I get to flip one of the world dynamics cards. What do we do as a group when we are feeling down? Sing. Love it. I feel like we're I a like musical that. group. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. awesome. I think it's against the rules for Elves of Linden to not sing. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if there's a loot around. Yeah. So. <laughs> Perfect, I love it. Um, I would like for you each to kind of think of your favorite song. You do not have to 
sing it or recite it, but just the title of it and what like or the, or, the, or what people call it and what it's about. Assuming it's his mm. lyrics. Just don't have lyrics. The good old dwarven humming song. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it is like to to find the stone. You have to hit a certain pitch yeah, that you can yeah. only do when you're humming or like throat singing or something. Absolutely, that could totally be a thing. I have a cheat because it's actually one of my favorite things I've ever written because it's very elven. But uh, oh, Elbrus, of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, very good. I I, I have a song too. Okay. Actually, that's fine. A little tune that uh, Sausage calls Some Say I. Mm, okay. Very nice. If you want more time, you don't have to tell me right I now. do need more time. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I ask really annoying questions, I know. All right, very good. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch and you're going to be flipping over the blue cards. And these are going to be starting to build the details of our location. So what we're going to say is we're going to be building out our um, safe haven, which is the runes. And we're going to say that there's a little village, like, just far enough away that they don't know where the runes are. But there's a couple NPCs there and things like that that we can interact with if you need supplies. It's super easy to hop sure. over there. Um, and it's small enough that they, like, don't really care. They're just like, all right, they can. A lot of people pass through there. Um, but it's nowhere near the size of, like, Bree or something like that. It's a small village, but you can get supplies. Have Go have a drink if you want it. Something like that. Okay. So we will come up with the name of that, if anyone has an idea of the name of that little village. Um, and at some point, I'll probably look up some cool elvish name for these ruins. Um, but we can also come up with, if you want to come up with a cool elvish name for the ruins, that's fine. Um, but I also want there to be a local name for the ruins. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So there's like the one that everyone calls it, like the banana ruins or whatever. Banana <laughs> ruins. Not that. Fine. <laughs> forbidden, forbidden, not allowed to be the banana ruins. <laughs> To be the Banana Republic. <laughs> no, that's one of the stores in the village yeah. where we all get our fashion. So, <laughs> I, just think, I was thinking like they're like curved and instead of something called like the Crescent's Moon Ruins, I've spent a day with a toddler. I'm like, the Banana Ruins! <laughs> Obviously. I'm cool. Anyway, this is what we're doing. This little village and our runes are where uh, what we're going to be uh, fleshing out with these blue cards. Uh, you haven't gone first yet, have you? I, I went first this oh, time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I apologize. Dave, you have to go first this time. Nah. I have to share the pain. Ooh, which event or holiday is celebrated more than any other in our location? So in this little little village, obviously the ruins that are deserted other than you. Although if you have a specific holiday you like sharing together, that's fine too. Maybe it's like solstices. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, specifically, perhaps it interacts with the ruins in some way. Oh. And like on that specific day, the sun sets right between them and the village gets oh. uh, extra daylight or something. You know, mm-hmm. like, like that street in New York that Thousands of photographers go to photograph once a year because uh-huh. mm-hmm. that's the day that the sun sets right down that street uh-huh. and it looks mm-hmm. the most New York picture ever. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of like that. So, like, the village celebrates it because it's the change of seasons and it interacts. Like, there's some cool interplay with the stone, maybe. Love that. Very cool. Now, is this the day the villagers come up to the ruins? No. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think. I think it's okay. more like. like it, it's, there's oh. probably like a tall part that sticks out of the river. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And on that day, it they they can see it. In like the in distance. Indiana Jones, it's got to go through the staff. Yeah. And the oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. What, 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 if, what if there is a special stone at the peak of it that absorbs a certain amount of light, and because it is the longest day, it absorbs enough light that it starts to kind of cast a glow. Oh. Oh, I like that. Mm. Just like a, a little shard of like mm. sunstone, essentially. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That just yeah. like absorbs. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even it, maybe it just looks like it does. Sure. Like maybe yeah. it's like the sun lines up with it in a way there that it go. looks like. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. just a little bit crystal, like it's like some quartzy rock. Yeah. And it yeah. just kind of glows, and they all are like, "Oh, this is the day that it absorbs all the sunlight." Yeah. <laughs> and it's like okay. Well, it's like a source of like local rumors and yeah. urban legend or. Uh, yeah. yeah. Bucolic legends. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I love that. All right. Um, let's do Jay next. 
Okay. Um, where in our location do you go to better yourself? So is that um, is that for the group as a whole where we better ourselves? With in, either one. And I guess that's that's in the village or in yeah. Or the so maybe ruins, huh? it can be like all of us, like all of us, or it can be like I'm working on getting buff, so I go do push-ups or try and pull up, do pull-ups on this sure. little tree, or like whatever you want. Or I'm going and meeting with the cleric in the village to learn more about spirituality. Or I mean, that's not really a thing in Tolkien, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, Literally, it's open-ended question for you to fill in however you'd like, Jay. Personally, you know what I'm going to say this. Uh, I took. A couple of um, skill ranks in athletics, and considering Aelin's desire to have me a little more um, nautically or like water uh, based, open to I yeah, suppose. yeah. Uh, I'll go to a portion where there's actually like some of the ruins that do cross, or that that, that like maybe there are steps that go into the river, oh. and I go in there during the coldest days to oh. kind of bathe and and like just increase my endurance. Nice. Okay, very like cool. Like when I have to like that's meditate or cool. think about what happened during our journeys, that's where I like to go. Okay. Um, I'm going to add a little bit to it. Sure. Like, and you might know this, Erland, because like you're familiar with the architecture and the history of this place. Um, but this actually used to be some sort of ceremonial pool. Oh. You're not sure exactly why. But these, this is not just, oh, there were steps there and it happened to the river moved course. It's like, no, these were steps into the river at the specific point for a specific purpose, even if that's unknown. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Love it. I love that. Uh, yeah. Very good. All right. I'm looking stuff up, so I'm going to save the math in this. Okay. No, you're good. I love it. Let's see what this card says. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Would you like a new one? Yeah. Okay. Let's try a different one. Ooh, okay. This is interesting. Okay. Our location had a valuable resource, but it's gone now. What was it, and why is it gone? Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Um... I want to say that our ruins have um, a tomb in them that okay. was um, cl is now empty, but uh -huh. like is super fancy and clearly held someone that was super important. Mm -hmm. um, um. Probably a warrior of some kind, so their weapons are missing mm -hmm. from the tomb. Nice. Cool. That's going to be fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. On a silver platter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really what this entire game is about. Like, yeah. give me all the treats and things to use as GM. <laughs> um, before I turn to card, I have a name suggestion. Oh, perfect. Um, it is uh, Anunio, mm -hmm. which is literally means the sunset pool. <gasps> oh, Ooh. wow. I love you so much. <laughs> What was that again? Uh, Anun, A N N U N, A E L. Anunail. Anunail. The sunset pool. I love it, Dave. I don't remember when you left. So, uh, Jay added like a ceremonial pool that he goes yeah, into. Um, he was just starting. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's where he goes to like increase his endurance, and oh, okay. I add he's like there's steps, but I added that there's like this was actually a ceremonial pool of some type from wherever wh whomever built these ruins, um, and Samantha added um, that there is a very fancy ornate tomb in these ruins that is empty now, so obviously there's something important or someone important, some things that are missing that were important and supposed to be here. Dig it. Yeah. Loving it. And we just got a name. Um, Anunio. Did I say it right? Uh, I will double check on the pronunciation. Okay. There's a Because we read it and yeah. we don't say yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anun Anunio, I believe, is the correct pronunciation. Perfect. Awesome. 
Yeah, it was the same. Like when I did uh, all my Quenya and I could like type Quenya. Yeah, that's like, what I did. That's... I totally type it because I like live role playing over, you know, the internet. And then yep. it's like, how do you say this? <laughs> it's spelled like this. Good news is I know enough people and have been to Wales and there's the closest pronunciation yes. to Cinderin. Yes. Shout out to Wales. Good for you, Wales. <laughs> um, okay. I'm ready to turn my card. Yes, okay. please do. Our location had a recognizable feature that was destroyed. What was it and who destroyed it? Oh no. Um, and I'd like it to be somewhat recent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, destroyed. And it can be the town or the room. So okay. Um, recognizable feature though because we've already described the thing that is, is recognizable that's still there so my brain is keeps <laughs> on going back to that yeah. um i think maybe the town had a bridge okay like a a way to get further uh coastward um over the river whichever river it is mm -hmm. there's so many um and maybe Maybe it got burned down okay. um, in some sort of local incident. Maybe okay. bandits or something, something very sad. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm not. But it was like a big, beautiful bridge that they had like made, and their ancestors had like cared oh. for, and it was like mm -hmm. part of the thing that made the town very known. And now maybe part of the reason the town is smaller is because they don't have this bridge anymore. Oh yeah, I like that. Maybe the name of the town has something to do with the bridge. Mm -hmm. Like something oh. crossing or something. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Like maybe it's an important thoroughfare and now that that bridge is gone, they're yeah. kind of cut off from merchants on that side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You have to go all the way around this other area to go to this other bridge to then go make the road over to Bree and the Shire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Everybody flipped over one blue card, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our uh, World Dynamics card is... Uh, if someone was going to describe our group, what would they say is our biggest challenge or flaw? And I'm going to switch this around. We're each going to give our own opinion of their, like their character's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so we each have to answer this question. And it may or may not be correct, but it's in your character's point of view. Mm -hmm. It's teaching point of view in fourth grade right now. So. Love this. <laughs> So our, as a group, our biggest challenge or flaw. The GM, I feel like our biggest flaws. We haven't named all our horses yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. I know, it's an important decision. I won't rush you. It's okay. Whoever comes up with theirs can go at any time. It's a big decision, though. And this can change. This is just where we are. When we start the game, this is where your opinion is it may very quickly shift um i think erland his opinion is that um our voices have a first impression instead of our faces that uh -huh. we are heard before we are seen <laughs> i like <laughs> and people okay. make opinions about what they hear all right mm -hmm. very good i love it I think maybe we're a little delicate. Okay. Like we're not <laughs> fighting folk. <laughs> right? And there's enough bad things out there that I'm worried about it. Okay. That makes sense. Canar doesn't think we're tough enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, on the dwarven scale of toughness. Yeah, we're definitely not yeah. dwarven tough. <laughs> Although looking at uh the strength ratings. I think yours is the lowest, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a six. Yeah, I'm definitely oh, okay. lower than that. Oh, oh, yeah, no, I'm a four. I'm, oh, okay. I'm yeah. a three. Sorry. So. Okay. No. I was looking at strength, just straight strength. Yeah, Because that's yeah, the yeah. only one I wrote down. I didn't write down all the things. Because I'm just going to get copies of your character sheets. So yes. Why would I write that part down? Also, I love that we have, like, very studious note takers <laughs> everywhere. Because that's very helpful. Because that is not my style. <laughs> Appreciate it. Rewatching streams is my note. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> that's key. Yep. 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 
the audience thinks we stream the games for them, but really it's because I don't want to write anything down. <laughs> That's why I built the studio. That's not why I built the studio. I'm just kidding. All right. Anyone else? Um, I think Runa um, kind of feels like maybe we're not all on the same page goal-wise. Okay. Like... I would give you that idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, we all want different things out of adventuring, mm -hmm. and she is very, like, laser-focused on, I'm going to get some fucking treasure, and then I'm going to give it to people that need it. Nice. Okay. And she's kind of like, get it together, you guys. Love a goal-oriented mm. woman. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think that sausage feels... Sausage. 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 Okay. No, that was a very good sentence. <laughs> uh, I feel, you know what? Sometimes I feel a little lonely because we are all from such disparate backgrounds. Oh, okay. And I, you know, coming from understanding what it's like to have sort of a shared community, when we have to speak for ourselves, Sometimes it's tough for us to, like you said, all be on the same page goal wise. Mm -hmm. But it's also tough for us to be all be on the, to, to all be on the same page, like voice wise. Mm -hmm. you know? So when people hear us coming, it's not always in unity. No. <laughs> nice. Hmm. Yeah, especially like a Hobbit from the Shire, like, or from a, any Hobbit, like community yeah. is so important. Having yeah. lacking a shared experience would be a really big deal to a Hobbit. That's very yeah. astute. I like that. Too. It sounds like when people see our group, they're like, how did this happen? <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> What's this about? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> very good. All right. Um, awesome. Those are really great answers. I loved that so much. All right. Uh, we all have one more blue card. So we're going to mm -hmm. go around. We're going to flip over. And who has not gone first yet? I don't think I've gone first. Okay. Go ahead, Jack. I, not... mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know. know. I'll have to watch the stream to like Yeah, I'm Okay, it's, oh, not, no. it's not vital. It's not a rule. It's just how I do it. Right. So. Okay. You impressed a group that is important to our location. What did you do? And who was it? Um, so someone who is important to you. The ruins or the town or something uh, like that. You know, we've, we've actually established quite a bit about the town. So I'm going to say that... I'm sorry. We've established a bit about the ruins, about our safe haven. So I'm going to say this is about the town. And I'm going to say that the town is actually beholden to uh, a landowner. Okay. Um, and we impressed their tax collectors. Oh, okay. Ooh. I'm not exactly sure how. Okay. Quite yet. Maybe it was lawman to tax man. Oh. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ireland is a bit of a, like, aloof elf. <laughs> as well as the like the lordly attitude plus the like ex sheriff. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, and the worldly burglars. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Nothing to see here. No burglars to be had. Sure. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, we impressed them so much that maybe they um, uh, they gave the townsfolk like another season to come up with their you know to to. to, to um gather up their their resources for taxation That's awesome. maybe it was right after the bridge disaster mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah. yeah like the yeah. tax collector came and then expected payment and the town's like we have nothing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. bandits came and robbed the town and burnt down the bridge yeah or maybe they burnt down the bridge themselves to try and stop most of the bandits, maybe? Oh, I don't know. Sure. Maybe but they're people like, aren't uh, sure. Maybe there's oh, multiple stories yeah, yeah. Yeah. flying around town. I, I love think that. I yeah. Yeah. And I think kind of, I saw someone burned down. Yeah. Oh no, the bandits did it. Like, And you sort of stood up for the villagers and mm. yeah, yeah. gave them a little extra time. And so the village is, is grateful. Yeah. Now, were uh, all of you off adventuring when the bridge burned? Did you just not see it until too late, so you couldn't stop the burning? Because you were at the ruins? I feel like we probably came dramatically, like, over the hill just in time to see it on flames. Yeah. Like, oh, no, there's smoke it. coming from yeah. the village. Yeah. You know, it's nighttime, it's nighttime, and there are, these there's, there are these flames burning on the bridge. Yeah. And you kind of see the glow in the sky. Yeah, it was very much the Lars homestead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, we're like, hey, what's up? What's going on with the town? Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, no. 
Oh, great, very good. Uh, who'd like to go next? I'll go. Okay. Someone has l lots of ideas for our location, but might have shady motives. Who is it? Oh, I mean, lots of people would want a cool old ruin with mm -hmm. some interesting stuff. So um, maybe it's the landowner. Okay. Um, and like, I think that in order to like develop the ruin back into a real <laughs> building, they might have to like cut back on farmland and that kind of stuff as well mm. and like divert the river. Oh. 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 And I so it's the sacred river. Yeah, and so it's like, no, you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Importance. Okay. Awesome. I like that a lot. Cool. Samantha or Dave? I'll go. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. You want a new one? Yeah, okay. I don't like that one. Sorry. That's okay. Literally part of the rules of the game. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you want a new one? Oh. Here, I'll shuffle them so you can get a new one. Hopefully this one will be good. <laughs> Some of these just don't make sense. Sorry. No, no, it's like that. <laughs> All right. And some of them, by this round in the game, a lot of times you have one that you've mm -hmm. answered already. Okay, I like this one. <laughs> Our location has a respected leader who we trust. Who is it and what makes them trustworthy? Mm -hmm. um, I think the, um, whatever the leader of the town would be called, mayor, I don't know, whatever. Um, they have kind of earned our trust mm -hmm. um, by, like, keeping our location a secret because okay. uh, they kind of see where we come and go. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, they uh, are kind of the ones that, like, um, vouched for us with the town. Mm -hmm. Well, like, when we first arrived, basically. Because okay. you see this kind of ragtag group mm -hmm. and the villagers are like, who are these guys coming in here mm -hmm. and hanging out all the time? And the I think the leader kind of sees our worth um, and gives us a chance to, like, put down roots there. Cool. You will have to come up with their name. Not I right will now, do that. But eventually. At least by next session. <laughs> Mayor McMarron. <McMarin>. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right. the, the burger of the town, right? So it's Burger McMarron. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> I, th I think they're just mayors, I think. <laughs> Sam was the mayor of the Shire for a long time. Yeah. So we'll just go with mayor. <laughs> mayor. As much as I like that burger with burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> All right. That been terribly really close to Mayor McCheese. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah we exactly. have a cheese. Yeah, we have a cheese. Yeah, we have a cheese already. And a brie so. and a sausage. <laughs> it would obviously have to be some sort of starch if we added anything else. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or a beer. So the mayor, Lord Mayor Tuberson, <laughs> named after a potato. Mayor potato. No. Um, so the mayor, the mayor, not only vouched for us, but does know that we come and go from mm -hmm. our yeah. little safe haven. His name from <laughs> Anun Eagle. I can't do it. Okay. His name. Oh, I'm so glad. I know. I know. I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm two percent. <laughs> yeah, I'm two percent. That's great. That's great. You wanted a start. I give you a start. Yeah, yeah. I can't write it down. I'm laughing so hard. Okay. Yeah, I'm Mayor two percent. That's very good. That is, that is one. Oh, That's good. I love it. Okay. okay. Here, here's a, a question. Okay. Uh, historically, was there ever, like, a meeting of the free peoples? Like, was there ever a, a like, delegation of elves and dwarves and free men that all kind of met somewhere in the ancient time? You know? For different reasons, there were, um, depending on, like, there were big councils before the original, like, defeat of Sauron and things like that. 
Like, what if this was one of those meeting places? I mean, they met kind of everywhere. That was part of the whole yeah. thing. But yeah, if they met... yeah, And maybe then... that's why we gained access, because we had a wide variety of people that were all traveling mm-hmm. together. Oh, like there's some sort of magical... Like, that's, that's what uncovered the secret entrance that they hadn't mm-hmm. found for, for ages. Oh. And maybe if it's not mm-hmm. magical, maybe it could also just be like, you know dwarven things, mm-hmm. you know yeah. Yeah. things, like, I know things you know bardling yeah. things. Like, yeah, it takes a like combination of different knowledge. Different craftsmen, yeah, yeah. That's the whole, like, speak, friend, and enter thing. Yeah. And you have yeah. to be able to read the runes, even mm-hmm. though it was made by the dwarves. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you would actually say the word friend in the right language, mm-hmm. and that was the whole test. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, we'll think on that. But that's that's why all of you were able to access parts of this that no one else was able to do. Mm-hmm. I like that. It also uh, points out how special, like the 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 bonds between uh, such a different uh, disparaging group, mm-hmm. disparate, not disparaging, disparate group. What? Okay. And then maybe like Mayor Tuberson was just fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he's on the other side of the river just fishing, and he sees a bunch of wolves chasing him. <laughs> and then we run up to the river, and it's like, whoosh. you know, it, like, opens up, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the the parting of the Red Sea. He's oh, yeah. like, it slides sure. open, and it drains away. Mm-hmm. We run inside, and it closes back up. He's like, he's what like, just happened? <laughs> As he's eating a yam. <laughs> <laughs> like an apple. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just raw, just crunching. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> He, right. he runs back into town, right? And then, like, the next day, here we all come walking into town. He's like, okay, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. That wasn't a yam induced fever. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> really gotta lay off the nightshades. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have so many questions about yam induced fever dreams. <laughs> I mean, there's every chance I might be there on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> accurate. Yeah. True. Oh, okay. All right, I think you've got the last blue card. Oh, I do. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Someone in our location has solicited us to do something we don't want to do. Who are they and what is it? Mm. Have weekly yam induced fever dreams, obviously, (laughs) is what it is. Oh my god, I'm gonna have done that yam eating contest Thursday. Every time I see the yams, I'm gonna laugh. (laughs) Yep, yep. Uh,. Hmm. Maybe it's the landowner, like the the noble, mm-hmm. uh, sent word to town that they want us to go take care of some big, dangerous problem. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's not like there's like a standing militia here or something right. that can go do that. So, uh, we're not really those people, like. That's one of the reasons why I'm worried. Like, oh, well, if we have to go out and fight a bunch of, I don't know, undead or something mm-hmm. in the Barrow Downs or something, like, that's that's a step beyond the, yeah. what we... Mm. Wolves were a problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't really want to go do that. It's a, a little zo- high, high, too high zone for you all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is, does he really want to... You to do that, or does he just want you to leave the runes because he wants, because he is to yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe he op- suggested the dangerous thing because he yeah. thinks we won't succeed. Yeah. Right. yeah. Who knows? All right, very good. Uh, all right. Uh, we were involved in a mystery. What happened and how was it resolved? Mystery. And it can be something super commonplace, like. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I wanted to be yeah. something, something like really mundane. mundane. Yeah. yeah. Bucket from the well disappeared. Nobody <laughs> knew where it was. Maybe all the kegs of ale at the inn went bad. Oh no! At the same time. No. Uh, and so that was a problem. So we. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, I'm a little bit allergic to dogs, and I love Fenris mm-hmm. so much, but just a little allergic to dogs. Oh no! It's okay, he's worth it, but I apologize <laughs> for the sneezing. Uh, 
and then uh, we tried to figure out what was going on, and mm. it turned out to be something like local kids had <laughs> tapped them to try and mm. get some because uh, they were stacked up out back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. just, yeah, just a little out of each barrel. They'll uh-huh. never notice, uh-huh. but just a little. Yeah, but then it, <laughs> it let ruined. air in. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So yeah. then when we actually went to drink from them, they were all gone skunky. Mm. Okay, oh, kind of a thing. I love it. Okay, what a crime. Super, yeah, yeah super big deal, but also like kind of wholesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Very good. All right. Now everyone has a purple card. The last one is a World Dynamics card. So these are ones that we're going to kind of come up with together. So until now, you've been flipping them over and answering for your character. Now you are, and ans- we're going to like collectively answer these purple cards as we've been doing when I do the card at the end of each round. Awesome. Um, we've all gone first. So I'm going to go first this time. This is like the first one you drew. It like, is the first one I drew, yeah. All right. Uh, how did our group first meet and what went well? Oh. The hardest question. Yeah. The hardest mm. question. That's why it's the fool card. The other side says, and what went wrong? That's oh, why. I love that yeah. one too. Hmm. 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 You can talk about it. You can debate and like throw out ideas and stuff too. First, I have to get an idea. Mm. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to wait for the end of the round, that's cool. Because that's a hard question to answer. That is a tough one. So why don't we have someone else draw, flip their card over, and then we'll continue on. I love how I like told you all to like sit still so that the mic will keep winning. And I keep like, I'm like. <laughs> it's really hard not to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Especially with like the swirly chair. Like I'm like, hey guys. Okay. So anyone would like to flip theirs over. I can't promise that your questions will be any easier, but it will give you thinking time. So we can answer this one at the end of the round, which is actually how Deckham is supposed to be played, but. I didn't read the rule book. I just wrote it. So. <laughs> Dave, why don't you go? Ooh. What is one line that no one in the group will cross? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Pony harm. I mean, obviously. Yeah. yeah. That's a given. That can't be. Yeah, I know. That can't be an answer. That's a joke answer. Because, yeah. Hmm. And this is when we're all answering together? Yeah. 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 What about, like, collaborating with orcs? Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, that would be like that. Yeah. That's I mean that's completely off the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But it happens, right? I mean, like mm-hmm. there's especially for like the humans. Yeah. Often. Mm-hmm. Or if you watch Or is that too hour. often? Is that too obvious an answer? Well, I think it's a good starting place. I feel like it is kind of an obvious answer, yeah. but I think I think if it's something that's very personal, like you absolutely would never do this. Like for the elf, obvious. Not so obvious necessarily for the Hobbit or like, well, it's like, oh, yes, these are like the evil like species that like they're having points where like orcs and humans and orcs and wizards and like got together because they had a common purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I do feel like we're kind of a, a, a common good. Kind yeah. of as a group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems to be kind of our intention. So maybe it's something like uh, not taking from the, those in need. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Especially with so many burglars. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you can steal, but just don't steal from people who really need it. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. I like that. Are you good with that answer, Dave? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, why don't you go next? Go down the line. Everyone's looking at me expectantly, so I'm making a decision. Oh, the lovers. Yeah. There is another group who are our allies. Who are they, and why do we trust them? Hmm. Do you like that one, or do you want a different one? Because I feel we kind of came up with an ally already in the mayor. Yeah. 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 You know what? Yeah. Let's. Or I mean, if you if you want to have another group out there. Then that's fine too. Um. No, you know, let's let's get a new one. I kind okay. of like I kind of like the uh, the the mayor being our ally. Okay. You? Yeah. Ooh. 
That's always a good reaction. Okay. Our group broke something important. What was it and why? How did we break it? Oh no. The bridge and we're like, nope, we didn't have any. Oh problems. no. <laughs> oh my god. That would be terrible. <laughs> Our group it occur broke to me. That's something so good. important. Oh, what a terrible shame. What was it and why? <laughs> it was those bandits over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I mean, I kind of feel like it's going to be the bridge. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the idea of us kind of like riding into town. Yeah, you know, I like Burning that off in the distance. I have I an do. idea. What if in our adventuring we come across like some sort of mystical artifact and like in trying to like interact with it we break oh, it? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, and we don't know yeah. what it did or like what it was supposed to do. It doesn't do it now. It, doesn't it definitely do it doesn't now. do it now. Um. Oh my god. What if we were journeying on some sort of mountainside or hillside and there was like a beacon or like some oh, sort yes. of like some sort of yeah like marker. Mm -hmm. That that looked pretty important. Rohan is not getting yeah. lit. Yeah, <laughs> the flames aren't getting lit. Uh, no. Um, what should I call it? Um, I kind of want to tie these two together because I like the idea of like on a hillside there's something, but I also like the idea of it being like some ancient mysterious yeah. artifact. Yeah, yeah. Not sure what oh, it was supposed to be. Maybe we thought it was a beacon because we could yeah. see the light, but when we yeah. get up to it, there's like kind of like a ruined cave entrance and we go in to find this weird illuminated thing and try to touch it and it breaks. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, curiosity gets the best of us. Oh, this yeah. thing's mighty pretty. Oops, it's not on there as solidly as I yeah. thought it was. Oops. <laughs> oh my god. Thank yeah, it's you. like spider silk thin yeah. metal working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. as we go up and we're like, oh, we could just lift it gently <laughs> off of there. It's like collapses yeah. on itself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I like it. Okay. All right. All right. We did a bad. <laughs> Oops. I'm sure it'll be fine. It has nothing. nothing well, what do we do? Yeah. Going back to that cave. I feel like Runa just takes her map out and writes oops on, <laughs> it, on that spot. The She's like, cave. don't go here again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Whatever what was behind that barrier in yeah. the back of the cave now. Yeah, so what did you do when it like collapsed? Because I love the idea of it's like this very fine kind of glowing um, like metal. And I'm going to, like silver or gold did you have in your mind? Like Like the glow. I was picturing gold. Okay. Like a warm glow. Yeah. So it's yeah. like okay. this very fine, like gold, shiny, like metallic, like thread. Almost like um like you see a cocoon mm -hmm. for like Ooh. like when they're just weaving the, the oh, silver yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, not yeah, quite thick things. yet. Yeah. And you can still kind of see them through it. So it looks like that. And you so it totally you're like, oh it's metal, it's solid. And it just literally like collapses and crumbles into like because it is, it's like as as uh, delicate as like silk. Yeah. And you kind of feel like, I would, I'll say that, um, Eriador, right? Erland. Erland, sorry. <clears throat> there we go. I have it written down, but I have a lot of things written down. On this no, page you're good. <laughs> Erland, um, like he, like, there's like a little like hitch in like feeling. Like when it collapses, like you don't, there's just like a little bit of an energy shift that you feel. Yeah. Like something's. Yeah. Like. Oh, oh, that did a thing. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what it did, but it did a thing. <laughs> I, I picture him being a little nerdy and, like, carrying around journals and things like that. And I think he, like, had the notebook out. What? Like, slaps. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, slaps it shut. We have to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys, like, just leave we, and then... We kind of just never speak of it yep. again. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, when it, like, collapsed... I'm going to say it, it, like, collapsed, and then it kind of turns to, like, this dust. Yeah, this well, what if it's, dust. like, you, there's this sort of, like, snapping of, like, metallic filaments, and mm -hmm. then yeah. this thing was, like, glowing or, or shimmering brightly, mm -hmm. and then the shimmer just gone. It's just yeah. gone. Yeah, it just, yeah, like, yeah. dissolves, and the cave gets dark, and it's just, like, this fine dust that's not glowing yeah. at all anymore. It's the, when, when the, the toddler breaks something, it's like, yeah. oh no, I actually have to go. I have to be somewhere else now. <laughs> yeah. And they do. They totally just drop it and run to the other yeah. side of the room and stand there and look at you. Yeah. <laughs> and we did that, but on a map, even. <laughs> we wrote it down. <laughs> okay, cool. That, that'll be fine. No, no nothing. Nothing cool. bad will yeah, happen. Absolutely of it. not. Nothing. No, yeah. Mm -mm. Ancient marker? No. Nah. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, our group was given information that we acted on. What were we told and what happened? 
Oh. Oh ho. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, you can ask for another. Uh, I do. I do kind of like it, okay. but I, I'm a little bit like. It's such a neat hook, and mm -hmm. I just I'm like what? What were we told? What did we mm -hmm. do about it? Hmm. Okay, no, I I can't think of something. Okay, that's fine. Do we it. do need to also remember we have to think of a patron. Yes. So mm -hmm. be thinking right. through this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to, I guess. Oh, I love this. Okay, good. Each person in the group should pick one word to describe a negative aspect of their personality. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. All right. So your personal or your character's personal opinion, like something, they may not even like as a character recognize it. Yeah. You as a player know like this is their hmm. law. Anybody know what it is? You can also pause and like come back to it. We still have to come back mm, to the, to the other one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm kind of 50 50. Okay. Between like greed and fame seeker. Oh, okay. Kind mm -hmm. of like want to make a name for myself mm -hmm. so that I can go home and be triumphant and, mm. or make a lot of money and go home and be, uh, you know. Either way, yeah. kind of the same same side, two sides of a very similar coin. Yeah. Um, okay, I like that. Uh, I I think I think I'm I'm too eager to dive into the unknown. Okay. Like recklessly eager to dive to the unknown. How has that affected your relationship with other hobbits? Oh. Um. <clears throat> That's a really good question. I, I'm i going to say that they find stories interesting, mm -hmm. but they don't always want me around after dark. Or okay. you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. they're not just going to kind of hang out with me for fear of what might come a-knocking sometimes. Ooh, interesting. So even when I come home, so to speak. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll get invited to the big mm -hmm. overall community gatherings, but nobody's going to come knocking at my door and nobody's going to ask me to come to dinner just as company, you know. So the loneliness and solitude you feel with your your group is also yeah. echoed. It isn't and... necessarily alleviated yeah. by coming, going back. And in home. some way it's community. caused your being... Alone at home as well. Yeah. Shire. Now, are you, I'm sorry. Are you a, a Hobbit of the Shire? I am a Hobbit of okay. the Shire, and my shadow is Wandering Madness. Okay. And so, there's this always kind of looming sense of not belonging anywhere. Interesting. So. Oh. And um, and Dave, for your kind of greed slash pride, that's something that's pretty common for dwarves. But why? Why is yours looked down on from your history? Like, why why do other dwarves like your family and stuff? Like, you gave me, uh, you gave hints about there being a little bit of discord there. I think I think it's probably because I don't make stuff. I'm not okay. a maker. I'm a oh, acquirer. I'm a yeah. Well, okay. and I'm I'm a good salesman. Okay. But I'm not a craftsman. Okay. So I think that's probably where I had some tension. Yeah. At home, so you know. I'm I, in my head. There's got to be like the Dwarven Crafting Academy, right? <laughs> and like, as a child growing up, you go through and you have to make, you know, final projects every year to show <laughs> your mastery over different metals, yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. And mine was always like barely passing, okay. right? Like, oh, well, it looks like a human made that. There was probably a lot of like teasing uh -huh. that kind of that kind of problem. Oh. Sorry, he's okay. Okay. he's whining at the being door. a baby. Oh. And I decided to kick the computer as it walked by. <laughs> Is everything okay? Is it still streaming? Yeah. Okay, good. Fantastic. <laughs> as long as you okay. didn't kick the very specific reset button. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh -huh. I don't count it out. I mean, come on. All right, very good. Okay. Let's go, Kai. Okay. Um, I think Erland is 
extremely aloof. Um, to the point of, like, it, it's like he doesn't really live on this planet sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just kind of... Uh, he thinks of himself as very approachable. Mm-hmm. He is not. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like, obliviously aloof almost? Or? Yeah, because I think even un- among elves, he would be considered, like, kind of aloof. Oh, okay. Ooh, wow. Um, because it, he gets very in his head. Um, like I said, I want him to have been a, a shipbuilder. Mm-hmm. And to be a shipbuilder for the elves is like being an undertaker. Yeah. Mm. And so mm-hmm. he kind of gets in his own way of making these beautiful things to send people away to never see them again. Mm. Yeah. And That's so amazing. He's um, he's very into the like art of the lore and of the, all the things, but he gets very like removed about it and just like, mm-hmm. I am in my books. Mm. I am in my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and doesn't... Um, he's out walking the world to see the world and still doesn't understand that he's not really living in it yeah. in the best way. Yeah. It is interesting because like as an elf, um, exploring the world and seeing it is almost is like saying a long goodbye. Yeah, because it's you you have no intention of being part of it. It's it's like going to a gallery and looking at a bunch of beautiful paintings and appreciating how beautiful they are and how they are very separate from you. And I think this is his um, because he's he's learned to be a shipwright from a very young age because yeah. that was like the whole thing when he was born was everyone was making ships and get ready to leave. That yeah. was the whole third age for the elves. And he looked around. And he's like, I've spent my whole life seeing people for the first time to send them away who don't know anything about where they've been. Yeah. And I can't do that anymore. I have to know what's out there. I have to see it. I have these mm-hmm. books that I've read that I've, there's objects and places I've never seen before. Yeah. And I haven't seen them. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to read about them when I get to Valinor. I want to know them yeah. now. I want to see them and touch them because I'm here now. Yeah. Um, and he's still kind of, it's like being bookish, but if the book was your brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's so awesome. Um. So what is the thing um, that you want to see the most? It doesn't have to be a th- like, like, or concepts. Like, what is... I think what he is actually searching for, and I don't know that he could articulate it in this way, is uh, to conceptually understand the people that the elves are leaving behind. Okay. The shepherds of who is taking on Middle Earth yeah. after they are gone. Because okay. um, I think he's not met them. He's he's not met a dwarf yeah um, before going out and he's not met a hobbit I don't think until very recently so it's like who are the shepherds who are going to carry on this world when we leave yeah and what does that look like and I don't think he understands yet yeah. so I think that's really what he wants what I'm sure in a book somewhere he's got a notated like yeah. I want to see the ruins of the city yeah. left <laughs> by the men <laughs> of the one north this one. Uh, yeah. yeah and and it's not that right. not really yeah that's awesome perfect Samantha. Um, I feel like Runa is very the opposite of that. Um, (laughs) She is kind of uh, not necessarily, like, reckless, but a little bit over-enthusiastic. Like, kind of like um, Sir Lancelot in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Like, once she's in her element and, like, the the fight music is going, (laughs) the adventure is happening, like, paying attention to what, like, her companions are doing or, like, what her actions are doing in the background, not really her thing. A little bit of a bull in a china shop. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Which is definitely how Sausage sure, got yeah. hurt. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Very good. I like it. Um, what is the... Uh, it can't be Sausage. I don't want it to be an answer. But at this point, like at some point in some adventure, when you were do- being your bull in a china shop, um, you did something that you really regret. And, like, you carry it with you. And you don't have to answer now, but I wanted... At some point, I want you to share what that thing was. Okay. It probably was by accident. It was not an intentional thing. Yeah. But it's left, like, a scar on you. So let me know what that is. Okay. What was my collateral damage? Yeah. (laughs) All right. Now back to the question that none of us want to have to answer. We just have one more. Oh. I do have one. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have one. So... That's okay. Let's see. Good job, Colleen. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one more card. <laughs> you want another one? Uh, yeah. Okay. That one doesn't fit. Ooh. 
Oh, this one's more fun. <laughs> There's someone whom everyone in our group dislikes. Who is that person? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say right now, it cannot be the landlord. Obviously, we all yeah. dislike that person. We already dislike that person. It's already the worst. It has to be someone else. Or while you talk about that, so you have to talk about it. I have had to go to the bathroom for like 30 minutes. Please do that. But we're doing an amazing job, so keep talking and don't let it sit inside. Hmm. Hmm. Who we uh, I kind of love the idea of being something really mundane. You know, yeah. like the annoying neighbor that's just a totally normal and fine person. Oh, sure, we're all like, sure. oh, God, that guy. <laughs> uh, it's a horrible Peter. <laughs> well, you know, what if it's another, like, traveling individual that we can kind of run into, oh, yeah. like, as we go around? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's funny. It's like a person who's always trying to pinch your business you're traveling yeah, business, yeah 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 or like yeah maybe there's know, an unhealthy. adventurer who's like yeah. constantly trying to one-up us yeah yeah i yeah. love that <laughs> hmm yeah I, I dig that a lot mm -hmm. just some big grandiose personality that's like ah, 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 <laughs> i didn't have to run from wolves <laughs> <laughs> And here I can sing a song about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll play my own instrument. Yeah. I've already yeah. written all the lyrics. In right, fact, right. I'm going to have it published next week. <laughs> He's like our personal Zap Brand again. Like we can't go anywhere without like yeah. running into it. <laughs> what we see, and we're just like, oh, here we go. And why? They come into the pub, and we're all just like, oh, yeah, God. yeah. I don't want to. I just can't. Oh, I love that. Now we have to name this person. Yeah. yeah, I know. That's the more difficult part. What if it's the opposite of a patron? That's like Bilbo Baggins or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I That'd be really funny if we all hated Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, I guess we hated <laughs> Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> that guy. That oh. guy. Uh, oh my god. He can't stop talking about how he went on this big adventure. And he adventure. just keeps on like disappearing. What? What why? with that? What is with that? No. He won't shut up about it. He's the reason why the dwarves <laughs> got their stuff back. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. I also like the idea of this person is not necessarily actually really good at stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, yeah. It's yeah. just it's, yeah. they're a charlatan straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we've decided. <laughs> okay, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Uh, and adventurer that we run into on the road very regularly mm -hmm. that is a big like braggart and oh hello hi well, i'm everyone's friend i'm mr personality where i was like oh this guy <laughs> just always going on about his latest adventure yeah. Yeah, and yeah. like you know he's embellishing so we're like that didn't happen but everybody buys it <laughs> it's like a joxer yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. very good Okay, very good. That was a deep cut for Xeno fans. Good okay. cut. Okay, thanks. Solid <laughs> cut. <laughs> Singing his own song while walking. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, do we have a name for this adventurer? That's what we were working on. Okay. Oh, I'm blurry too, but I'll just do a picture. All right. Um, well, we can come back to name until we come up with it. I'm trying to think of like a name with flair. Yeah, right? it needs like, flair. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it has to also be like a little broy, like a frat bro of Middle Earth. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Chad the Brave. <laughs> Charlton the Brave. Yeah. <laughs> Brad the Brave. Brad the Brave. Brad the Brave. Brad the Brave. <laughs> no, you can't. It's very funny to us. A little off tone. <laughs> can handle like regular humans. It's, yeah. Hobbit's being named Yam. What about <laughs> Burly? Oh, okay, Burly. Oh, burly. Burly, and I can't You're stand Burl. Burly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Burly. It's like, let's just call you Sausage so that we don't have to even <laughs> right. say yeah, yeah. part of your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got Burl already. Yeah. It's a little close. Yeah, it's a little close. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't. I don't like mind the idea of yeah it being tied to us somehow that way where it's like ever so slightly removed from us. 
Well, like, well, why don't we can have Burly in it because I like that idea. So maybe it's like Brian yeah. the Burly. And like, sure, Burly sure. is like sure. tough. Or like yeah, strong. yeah, yeah. Uh, They're like a spelt. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody with a cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about Benedict the Burley? Benedict oh, the Burley. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's a so name for someone that we hate. It's <laughs> a very Burley. punchable name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and his favorite joke is like, well, you're Burl, but I'm Burley. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. And I just, oh. I just no. take that pint yeah. and I relish it. Yes. <laughs> Even more. It goes right. Oh, no, no, I love the voice you gave him already. Yeah. That's what I'm excited about. Okay, yeah, that's Because uh... we're going to run into that a lot. And it's going to be delightfully horrible. <laughs> this guy. I have to write that down now so I can do that voice. <laughs> All right. I wrote down Gaston voice. Yeah. Something. Oh, hey. yeah, yeah, like yeah. The... How I channel that. Okay, yeah. cool. But yeah. but they're not necessarily actually really good at stuff. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. no. It, not at all. All right, very good. All right, so that's all our cards. So now we have to go back to the really hard card. Yep. How did we meet and what went well? I kind of want to say, like, we have to figure out who our patron is, but maybe our patron, like, blind dated us, like, adventure style, okay. like, individually like, recruited us and was like, come meet me at this place at this time for an adventure. And then we all show up and we're like, who the fuck are you guys? Yeah. You mean I'm gonna have to split the money? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought this was a architectural tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all thought it was something different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Okay. So I like I like that. And what was that like first adventure? So your patron, whoever they ended up being, blind blind adventurer to you. Swipe right on all of us. Yeah. I well, and I love that. Like you each got a letter saying something very like unique to you, thing, mm -hmm. a thing that you could not refuse. Yeah, absolutely. And they were all kind of true. Like none of them were outright lies, but there's a lot left left not specified. Hmm. I, I guess it really boils down to, like, how grandiose do we want our plans to get, mm -hmm. right? Because if we're talking about who the patron is, if we're, you know, if we, if we pick Gandalf or something, we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's big adventure. Okay, but he also that's... does pick really weird, dumb little things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you know, uh, whereas if we pick, like, I don't know. A made a person that we make it. A made a person. Yeah, some... mm -hmm. Made a person from Made Okay. Or, or like, I don't know. Bilbo maybe... Baggins. <laughs> maybe it's, uh, maybe it's even like Radagast. Oh, right. That's like oh. kind of what I was thinking. That'd be really like funny. One of the other. Yeah. Yeah. He's like History. just chilling, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I don't want to get involved in all of this. Just yeah. leave me in my forest. Mm -hmm. But like sometimes he has to go do badass stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. Doing do his starry stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you mind a suggestion? No, 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 no. Okay, maybe, uh, whoever it is, I kind of like the idea of it being, like, one of the wizards, mm -hmm. um, because there are wizards that don't appear in any of the, like, mm -hmm. are, are not very specific, yeah, <laughs> there's a bunch of, um, that we could do a lot with, because there's not a lot written about them, which I like, I enjoy, like, the, the freedom of that. Um, maybe it has something to do with your runes, and maybe it has something to do with like they need, they were the ones who kind of orchestrated this perfect match of people who could mm. get into this ruin, and maybe they were like, and maybe you don't even know this. Maybe they were interested in that that um, tomb that's there. Oh yeah, and oh. they're like, oh right, everyone, it unlock, it's empty. Yeah. Oh no. Mm. Okay. Well. Uh. Oh, we're friends now. Okay. Why don't you go do this thing? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wizard tomfoolery. Yeah. <laughs> kind of been feeling yeah, yeah. a vibe like I that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like yeah. that. So maybe that, uh, like that, maybe opening the tomb and like getting this and with the wolves was kind of like your first escapade together. Mm -hmm. um, and you thought it was to do something else, which the wolves maybe prevented or chased you after. We'll say they chased you after because I'd love for you to have like a win. Like you went and did a thing. And it was sort of like a... 
go team, a team building exercise. It's like the trust fall, mm -hmm. like the wizard's version of a trust fall exercise, but then you came back and like, oh, these are the ruins. Okay. And maybe they even set the wolves on you to drive you towards this place. Okay. Rude. Very rude. What if, okay. <laughs> Wizards are weird. Yeah. They do weird shit. Well, I mean, if wolves killed us, then obviously we weren't the right party. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, also, like, who knows? Maybe wizard, like, just scare them really badly, like wolf friends. Yes. Yeah. Make wolf noises. Yeah. <laughs> Give them some motivation. But while the, the wolves are, okay. like, chasing you, like, it's a nice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That won't Grr, yeah. Scary wolf. <laughs> <laughs> this one's named after me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. So, so is that something that's kind of... That, did you have another idea? Well, I was just thinking of how it went well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so... I mean, what if... What if the idea was that we were supposed to find these runes and we didn't find them initially and that's how we stumbled onto the wolves or that's how the wolves kind of like beset us okay. and it was working together to escape these things that we finally did find those ruins okay and solve sort of the puzzle of how to open it okay yeah i and, like that and that's when we kind of realized that something like like in the heat of the moment something just clicked oh mm -hmm. i have an idea um what if uh we kind of like weren't all on board with like working together because we were not initially yeah. expecting to work with other people. Mm -hmm. um, but when we, we finally get to the ruins, it requires each of us to sing a different part of oh. the oh, thing. And we realized that. that like we like to sing together. Oh. Different ranges. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I love that. You know, we have like, we have like a different voices represented mm -hmm. and that's what that's what the different cultures, that's how the different cultures kind of like came together in that. That's cool. I love that so much. So like, so the thing that opens these ruins, or whatever they look like, is this song that mm -hmm. you all sing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> that's beautiful. And that's sort of what clicked amongst all of us. Yeah. Yes. Oh. And that's what like brought you together. I love it. Found common ground. Awesome. All right. So uh, let's then like do the actual mechanics. We have to hurry. I know it's getting late for everyone. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, let's finalize your patron and my computer died so i'm sorry i'm flipping through the book now i don't have quite my notes right now um so first thing you need to do is come up with a patron i think it's the wizard you do want you want I like to the wizard idea, idea. yeah wizard. okay yeah. so we'll do a wizard so we'll just go off of um there's a gandalf the gray is listed in here it will not be gandalf but we'll use the stats and points and stuff from gandalf because he's a wizard too um, so favored callings is messenger and captain for this. Mm -hmm. And then plus two fellowship points. Um, and then additional advantage you have is you spend a fellowship to make a shadow test favored. Oh, good. And then... Uh, the agenda is to warn the free peoples and inspire mm -hmm. them to action. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. That yeah. matches. Yeah. And I'll do a little bit of research and figure out which one of the history I think would be the best kind of match. Which one vibes? Yeah. <laughs> which one vibes? What color I feel like that day? Um, all right. So our safe haven we've already decided on. Um, let me see. I don't know if there's any... It's like the start, ideal starting safe haven is the village of Bree. Sorry, too bad. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> too bad, Freely Publishing. We made We're our own, own village. people. Yeah. Which we have to come up with a name we for it. Something Crossing, I think we said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. Crossing. Formally known. Town formally known as something yeah. called yeah. Creeks, <laughs> Creeks Crossing, maybe? Oh, that's cute. And it's kind of. And then some sort of colloquial name for the ruins, because no mm -hmm. one's going to walk around and call it. No. No. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Ex no. Uh, but it's going to be funny. Like, we're going to laugh about that for a long time. Um, 
Oh, that's nice. There's a tell a story of how a player hero reached the location where the company first meets. Well, we already we already we did, we did that one. I know. We didn't even know we were doing it, and we did. <laughs> um, all right. It doesn't look like there's any mechanical stuff for the runes right now. Okay. Uh, fellowship rating. Let's see. The fellowship is a pool of points shared. Um. I think we just have four. We just start with four, but we get plus two from being one. Uh, yeah, from our patrons. So we start with six. Our wizard, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, next time I will try and charge my laptop all the way before the next game. So we start with six fellowship points. And our fellowship focus. Um, well, that's... We kind of did that with Decima instead of yeah. With the in -universe. I'm just I just want to make sure if we have pluses or anything that we need to pass around from uh, that. Mm -hmm. um, Players are free to indicate another player here as their if, choice. If you support their fellowship focus, they get two dice. So like, if I'm gonna help my focus, got it. That person gets two dice versus if I help somebody that isn't my focus, they get one. Okay, well let's go around and just specify our focuses then, our foci. Um. No, no, no. I'm, oh, I'm that's thinking. Out, I'm not thinking who you're. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, player who providing support for their fellowship focus makes them gain plus two D instead of one D. So that's the mechanical advantage of helping your focus versus helping someone else in the thing. What is our focus? Is uh, there I, one of the one, one of the, the other, other player characters? In the room. Oh, okay. So this is like your person that you were focused on the most, and it could be. Like, you look up to them. It could be that they're family. It's just, like, you have a especially close... And it doesn't even have to be a two-way bond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if you really look up to someone, um, like, it could just be a one-way bond that way. Got it. Yeah, it could totally be a web versus a... Yeah. Um, but the benefit of caring for someone comes at a price. Player heroes gain plus one shadow point whenever their fellowship fo focus is wounded Ooh. or suffers a bout of madness or is otherwise seriously harmed. So you, there, there is a negative as That's well. That's gross. Yeah. So think about who, based on our deck in the game, would be the one that you would kind of care about or focus on the most. Um, well, I think uh, I think Sausage would focus on Hunar. Okay. Again, because of that worldliness that I so yeah, yeah. aspire I to. Man. I'm not sure. If, I think I can change as we play, too. Okay. I'm not mm. sure. I'm going to make it so, because it seems silly that, like, as a, as, a, if a, as a character, you grow and change, like, your relationships would change. So I'm sure there has to be. I think Erlen's would be Burl, partly because Burl is like a man of society and things mm -hmm. like that. And I think that Erlen's not really sure what to do with the other two <laughs> as much. And I think also like elves have such an affinity for hobbits in particular. Mm -hmm. they, they're so mystified by them. And I think that that instantly happened with Erlen. It's like, you actually have a people and you are so mm -hmm. intimate with each other and elves are so not this. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think mine is probably going to be the fascination with Runa about making money and giving it to people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Like, yeah. that. Like, we share a lot of methods and, <laughs> yeah. and a lot, but then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <Sorry>, what? <laughs> we, we just spent an hour, like, breaking into a safe and taking some valuables and we're leaving, and then you see a kid on the street, and you're like, oh, hey, here you go, kid. Here's <laughs> ten gold, or whatever. And I'm yeah. just like, what's happening? <laughs> we almost died getting this. <laughs> You've given it away. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think Runa's would also would be Burl also because um, he's so kind of recklessly eager to dive into the unknown. She sees a bit of herself in that, I think. Yeah. And like, despite the fact that he's older than her, uh, sees him kind of as like an adventure Padawan. Like, oh. come on, let's go. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Adventure Padawan. I love that. That's yeah. very good. All right. Awesome. Well, 
I think that is it for character creation, world creation. We have an amazing, amazing setup here. Um, I will, um, we can come up with a name for our campaign this week now that we have a little bit of the world fleshed out and cool. That was so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. All right. Um, I have a script that I have somewhere. Here it is. Thank you for joining us for session zero, uh, character creation of our uh, the One Ring campaign, which will have a name very soon, especially now that we have information. Um, I'd really love to thank our chat mods who do amazing work, and uh, to all our Patreons who keep us ad-free and independent. It's because of you we're able to play games that we enjoy, however we enjoy them, instead of doing stuff that's popular or sells advertising or we can get sponsorship from. So based on fun, not system popularity. Um, and you can join the heroic ranks at happyjacks.org slash Patreon. And uh, let's go around the table and reintroduce ourselves and tell people where they can find you and stuff like that and announcements of things that are coming up. Uh, we started this way this time, so let's start with this. Hello, I'm Sam. Uh, you can find me at Red Pandroid on most of the social networks where I don't post a lot because I, I don't know. <laughs> I love playing video games instead. Yes. But when I do, you can see pictures of my cute ass dog or stuff I make in my shop, uh, stearnastore.com. Uh, I'm Kai. I'm so happy to have done my first episode with you guys. Yay! Um, had so much fun. Um, you can find me all over the internet as Estelle of Imladris. Um, it is Elvish. Um, it's on the name tag right under his name, right there. There you go. <laughs> um, you can find me on all social media uh, as the Stella Madras. I will be starting a new campaign in two weeks. Um, two weeks. Uh, called What We Do in the Shallows over ah. on Matihi. It is a 5e pirate adventure. I'm very excited. We've been prepping that for like six months. Nice. Um, cool. And uh, a podcast that is coming out later this year from my podcast group called The Lore Brewery that is a multi-system shuffling group of game masters nice. having a lot of fun. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. We love it. I love that people spend that much time prepping campaigns. And I'm like, I looked at this a little bit, and here's a here's a tarot deck. Let's do it. Both are good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Totally yeah. both. Both are good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Jay Africa. You can find me on Twitter at Jay Africa. You can also find me on Instagram at Transplantation and on Facebook as Jay Africa. And now on Hive at Jay Africa as well. Um, oh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I've got a D&D Adventures League adventure that is going to be dropping uh, hopefully tomorrow on the DMs That's Guild. Cool. So I'm very excited about that. Um, uh, it's a new Spelljammer Dungeon Craft adventure. Ooh. So uh, keep your eyes out for it. Um, yeah, and that's that's about me in a nutshell for tonight. And I, likewise, I am super excited after hearing about all these awesome characters to be um, <laughs> in this campaign and adventuring with you all. Yeah. Uh, I'm Kadev. Uh, I'm here. That's where you'll see me most. <laughs> uh, there is some little part of me that is getting to the point where I might be having a schedule again to get back to driving truck on Twitch uh, and talking about random stuff on the side of the road. But I see the Rob's in the chat and he's going to give me shit because I haven't done it yet. Uh, but I, when I get to the point where I'm ready to do that again, I will let everybody know on all the various social channels. Yeah. So, For some context, Dave is one of the top uh, truck simulator drivers on Twitch. Yeah. I've been in the top five. Yeah. Multiple times. Out of like... 25 people yeah. streaming the game. So, <laughs> it, counts. it counts for yeah. something. Yeah. And I'm Kimmy. I'm your GM for this amazing campaign. I'm so excited about this. You can find me at Golden Lasso Girl pretty much everywhere. My new thing is Golden Lasso Girl dot, dot card with two R's dot CO because mm -hmm. that yeah. is the thing. Um, and I just redid the website for Golden Lasso Games dot com today. Like, well, no, I've been working on it for days and I haven't been sleeping a lot, um, but I got it done today. So if you want to go check it out, it's very pretty. And that's also one of the places you can go and check out Decima. And we're hoping to have um, like actual decks back in stock in about six weeks. Awesome. It, it, depending on if the shipping and everything is actually on time, which is still like a crapshoot. So, but soon. So, uh, yeah. 
And I'm very, very excited about this campaign. And I'm feeling much better now. I was very nervous at the beginning. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is a new system. And I haven't jammed in a hot minute, at least on stream. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we will actually be playing this game on Monday nights. This is a Tuesday because it's like a, a holiday weekend and all this stuff. So but we'll be play, playing on Monday nights, every Monday night at 7 p.m. And we'll have a campaign name soon. So check us out. Uh, if you check out happyjacks.org slash schedule um, and happyjacks.org, that will all be there eventually. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.